All right. Well, welcome to episode 303 of the Clive Barker podcast. Today, we return to Jericho Squad 77, our Dungeons and Dragons game set in a Clive Barker world with my co-host, Jose, playing Chirdovir. Hello, guys. The Uredimex Sway Worker and Brant Finstad as Jonathan, the Nunciate Seagull Sorcerer. Hello, guys. <laughs> and uh, uh, Lori Bechet as the Demigoddess Priestess Zoe Mason. Howdy. Uh, Catalina Carida as Musette, the seer kind bard. Hi. <laughs> and uh, Joe Monko as Ralph, the Nightbreed Warlock. Oh. Uh, this episode is sponsored by Don Bertram Celebrate Imagination. Uh, Don Bertram Celebrate Imagination Shop is dedicated to benefiting the arts and medicine program at Texas Children's Cancer Center. Up to 50% of the proceeds uh, support the program where artist Don Bertram volunteers monthly. This is not a good time for my voice to go out. <clears throat> Don Bertram is a longtime friend of Clive and celebrates and continues, continues to be inspired by his art. He uses the inspiration to help kids through the Texas Children's Cancer Center, and we couldn't be more thrilled to continue working with him. So here's a painting that I bought of his called The Sentinel. Oh, it's a little froggy. Yeah. Uh, there's a oh, news feature video that shows Don working with the kids at Texas Children's Cancer Center, his artwork. Uh, so if you click on the side banner at clivebarkercast.com, you can find a link to his videos and his Etsy shop where you can buy his prints or his books and support this program. Uh, check out the most recent shared painting, The Little Buddha. Actually, I could probably share that right now. Maybe I'll do that. So here's The Little Buddha. Uh -huh. After the destruction of Midian. After the unraveling of the fugue. After the fall of the unbeheld and the reconciliation of the five dominions. The Jericho organization has expanded and spread itself thin, guarding the breaches and investigating anything that comes through. This Dungeons and Dragons game is the story of one of those teams. Let's begin. Last time, the first two members of Squad 77, Musette and Churdovir, looking for help with a plan to rescue Chur's brother, turned to Midian Squad 43. But the squad was late coming, and Musette and Chur were forced to go to them, where they found the squad was in trouble. Uh, many of the squad was killed by a group formerly known as the Sons of the Free, but now going by the name the Aboriginal Children. Uh, when the leader of Squad 43, uh, Fiddler Kustoff, discovered they had been breached, he activated a failsafe, uh, which, after a short time, transported the whole facility to an empty field in the Fugue under the protection of Squad 3 in Liverpool. Uh, now back at the base of Squad 77, Second Dominion Isordorex, in the basement of the store, the 77 Wonders of the Imagica, uh, weary and sore from the previous day's battle, the group is wandering out for breakfast, being prepared by Bentley Widget. Is that uh, music coming through for you guys? Yeah, yeah. It's just a, okay. maybe you want to bring it down a little bit. Yeah, it's a little loud. Maybe like two, two notches. All right. Did that do it? That's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Am I still, did that make me quieter too? No. Nope. Oh, good. Morning. I haven't done this before. All right, hey, so was uh, was I too quiet then in when I was doing the intro? No, no, it was good. We could hear okay. you. Okay. All right, so as you as uh, you all start to wander out, uh, Bentley says, "Hey, welcome. Come on out. I'm 
I'm making France toast. Oh, that's fancy. I'm actually hungry. I'm always hungry. Why couldn't we have beignets? <laughs> I'm a little sore from the battle yesterday, but I'm I'm doing better. So, what what does this place look like? Like where? Um, yeah, yeah. So the the uh, the basement. Sorry, I, I guess you haven't been there yet. So the basement of of the uh, seventy seven wonders of the Imagica is uh, bigger than the upstairs. Um, probably by magic. Uh, there's a central area with a table and uh, uh, the portal that you transported in on. And there's a, a hexagonal shape where every uh, every edge of the hexagon is a door leading to one of the bedrooms available. Okay. And is it like so there's stone, eight, eight carved stone? And they're not all being used. Okay. But you, you get your own bedroom, even though you're a seagull. <laughs> it's just another place to shit. Um, <laughs> so, so, so is it like carved stone, or I mean, what's the aesthetic? Um, the, it's a mix of stone and wood. Okay. Honestly, I'm imagining the inside of a hobbit house. Oh yeah. But uh, I remember you had mentioned the VHSs, so. Oh, and, and that's a, up, the, yeah, and th that stuff is upstairs. So there's a there's a wall behind the shop area with kind of a, like an employee lounge sort of a thing, and there's a couch, and a um, and a and a tube TV, and a shelf full of VHSs next to it. <laughs> Sounds like my house. Yeah. Look around. Okay, as long as they have Buck, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> um. So. I, I'm guessing that the the table is where we're going to have breakfast. Yeah, yeah, it's a, okay. a big uh, big table. It's kind of on top of the transport, so if you guys want to teleport somewhere, you got to move the table. So, off. so Bentley, what's for breakfast? Oh, it's fr French toast, you said, right? Yeah, you know, I I just opened it up. It's French toast. Why didn't somebody correct me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, these are things from the Fifth Dominion. You know, whatever. What is a French toast? Uh, it's it's bread that you make it all soggy with eggs and then you fry it. This does not. I had sound it one out time and it was really good, so I got a cookbook. Like snake eggs? No, bird eggs. Sure. It comes with bird on it then. Yeah, they're great. It's like chicken and waffles. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I'm famished. <laughs> Wonderful. And okay, Jonathan, well, I'm just gonna hop on the table. And just start eating off I, like a serving plate. Okay. <laughs> Kicking dishes around. And and while I'll he's making that, um, you guys can sort of introduce yourselves and get get acquainted and try to put the put together what you know about what's going on. Hey, get out of my plate, you bird! I yell at, at Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave his plate, but I'll just like grab the last scrap of food and drag it off <laughs> as I'm leaving. Curses! <laughs> All right. Well, um, so where are we? Um, yeah. Well, we're not any closer to find your finding your brother. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. St I'm still very concerned about my brother, um, but at least now we have more friends that might help us. I Did asked around a little something? about that while you were gone yesterday. So everywhere I asked, uh, no one had heard or seen about uh, those, those guys with the praying hands for a head. Yeah, the, the, the Nullianax. Nullianax, thank you. My mind yeah. just went blank for a second there. <laughs> It's the character's so, fault. It's not my fault. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's early. Don't worry. Yeah. So, uh, so maybe we should get some something set up and go back to the Second Dominion at some point. Well, luckily you're in the Second Dominion right now. Oh yeah, right. This is is Ordorex, right? Yeah. Okay. Just about well, an hour from where. It's actually about two hours from where you live. Well, do you have any idea where we should, uh, who we should talk to about uh, finding these uh, cultists? Tell me more about the cultists. What what do you know so far? 
So they had a working vehicle from the Fifth Dominion, and um, and they had robes, um, and then they had a Nulianak. So Nulianaks are connected to the First Dominion to Apexamendios, and we thought they were extinct. So this is very confusing. Um, but they did have a vehicle, you know. I mean, that's not very common around here to have a vehicle from the Fifth. And I imagine that they have a lot of knowledge about very ancient um, magic. If they were able to summon that. Hmm. So, sometimes people do have cars or motorcycles. I mean, we have a motorcycle. I think with so many people now, we probably need something bigger. I don't think I'm capable of riding motorcycles anyway. There's a big rock on my back. Yeah, what's the deal with that? I don't know. It got stuck there. It just it literally, its fingers started to move and it attached itself to me and I'm stuck. I'm still trying to figure this one out. <laughs> Do we need uh, to take you to a hospital? Well, then they'll just cut my back off. <laughs> Can they even cut through my skin? <laughs> Where were you where this happened, where you got that hand on your back? It was underground. I fell down a hole. I went down a hole. Mm. And uh, I remember there was a bunch of uh, bones and artifacts around, lots of stone rubble. So it was and like I, a cemetery? Yeah, it was at home, but I really don't remember home. Okay. Well, that's strange. I mean, uh, d does it weigh you down? Does it speak to you? What, what, do what does it do as of right now it is about an 80 pound stone that i can't Ugh. get off that's all it's really doing to me i feel like right now well at least you're gonna have a great workout yeah here i wanted to go swimming <laughs> i'll try to do squats with the thing with this thing on so yeah I'll let you know how it turns out so, so after i'm finished eating his french toast i'll sidle up to cho devere and say, it sounds like your brother got involved with some pretty, pretty sketchy people. How did that happen? Well, well, he was he was supposed to join the Jericho squad here in his order X. Um, and I ended up taking his place because he got kidnapped. So I am I am I was interested in knowing if the Jericho squad has any knowledge about any mission that he might have uh, be assigned to um that they could have more details about what who might have been his enemies um that's why and, i was asking bentley yeah bentley can we talk to my cousin maybe she knows because she didn't give me a lot of information she just kind of sent me off after embarrassing me <laughs> totally her fault. well not mine <laughs> we could actually and he he pulls out the uh he pulls out a big photo album and it, there's a there are Polaroid pictures of the different Jericho squad members. Um, he says, if you just look at one of these pictures, you can talk to them using your your uh, using your your talking stone. <laughs> the talking stone. Yeah. So so Musette got one of these as a phone case. So she oh. can take pictures with her phone and then look at them and concentrate on the stone and it will and she can uh, she can do uh, right. messages and sending and stuff. I like that Chodovir knew about knew about that, but I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I remember Bentley uh, handing something like that. Um, yeah, your, can... yours is not a cell phone case. It's they don't have those, but yours is right. just a uh, it's a stone with runes on it. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, I'm pretty sure that the cultists that we fought were not from Jericho Squad, but uh, I mean, I don't know who to contact. Um, maybe, maybe Musette can contact her cousin and see if she knows anything about these cultists. And as you flip through the pages, there is a, a, a picture of, of her cousin. Um, mm -hmm. What was her name? Uh, um totally bad at short-term memory 
It's okay. I'm bad at long term. Yeah, cousin Aldrin. Aldrin, yeah. Aldrin Aya. Okay. And uh, as you flip through there, you see um, there's there's a picture of Musette um, and uh, pictures of some of the the uh, the squad members from from 43 that you recognize. Um, most of them are dead. There are some pictures of uh, of members from different squads, and you see one from Jericho Squad 77 named Cassius Briar. Uh, it's like a, bl a blonde looking human guy. So th does this squad number show up on the bottom of the Polaroid or something? Yeah, yeah, there's there's little written notes under each one about what squad they're with. And and under Cassius Briar, it says, uh, it says, um, retired. Hmm. Hey, what happened to this Cassius Briar, Bentley? Uh, it seems like he should be working here, right? He did. He, he's the one who taught me magic. Oh, so he was a, a, a wizard? He still is. Actually, um, you uh, you would recognize his name because he's the chief, um, he's the main political opponent of your brother, Drobo. Oh, this guy. Okay. All right. So here's a good clue. I mean, I didn't know he was in the Jericho squad. Why did he leave? Well, the, the Jericho, he liked Jericho because we sort of choke off the borders to keep people from going in and out between dominions. Mm -hmm. um, but he felt like we weren't doing enough. Okay. He wanted to, uh, he, he felt that we should, we should close off the borders between every dominion. He wanted to build a wall around the Zordorex. I suppose. <laughs> um, well, I, I, I do recognize him. He might be a good place to start. Uh, can I use my stone to talk to him? You could if you'd met him. You have to have met him before. Okay, okay. So Bentley right. says, if you want, I could talk to him. Is there some, I mean, is there, what do you, do you want me to ask him anything? Um, let's see. Well, I don't know that he would be able to do that. I don't know that he was down to that point of kidnapping my brother, but I know that they didn't see eye to eye. Um, so if we're looking for enemies of Drovo, I mean, he's a, a, as good a place to start as any. Um, maybe and, we could- And Drovo is sort of against the Jericho and what they stand for as far as controlling the borders and keeping, you know, keeping the Fifth Dominion safe, he feels like the magic as a circle and that we should that uh, there should be free free passage and trade between all of the dominions and okay. uh, jericho has sort of kept York city jericho sort of kept the magic a, a secret for the most part hmm. yeah bentley can you can you contact cassius so i could okay. ask him some questions Please. Sure, sure. Uh, what what questions do you want me to ask him? Well, first of all, I would like to know if he knows anything about uh, the Nulianax returning or any sort of cult that's been rising up in these Zordorex recently. Okay, we can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys had mentioned the Aboriginal children. Yeah. That okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. a sort of, he felt a little betrayed when, uh, the, during the reconciliation, when, when uh, Hepexamandios was killed. So the Aboriginal children was kind of his mantra. Mm. The Aboriginal is Hepexamandios. So the children of, Abor uh, the Aboriginal children could be anyone who still followed him. Okay, so so he he, in my view, he definitely knows something about that. Then, so he he might have actually been involved with them. So I, I guess to, I hate to think that. Yeah, but if the cult that we fought was the Aboriginal children, um, they said something at the end when they got into the car. So maybe we shouldn't contact him. Uh, maybe we should uh, go to where he lives. 
and investigate what's going on there. Um, do you know where he lives? No, I, I don't know where he lives anymore. I mean, uh, I guess I could contact him through the stone right now and ask him. Yeah, set up a meeting. I would like to. I would like to go there and, and meet him with with okay. the rest of the squad. I'll I'll do that. Uh, we'll see if he's receptive to that. So he uh, he opens the book to Cassius's page and looks at it and and uh, pulls out a stone and concentrates on the stone for a second. He says, "Hey, Cassius, this is Bentley. I have some things I need to ask you about." Yes, yes, I'm well. We have a full squad again. I run the squad now. Yes. I have the Blair Witch Project now. <laughs> yes, I know now that you're gone, right? It's one freaky movie. Look, man, one of our members has gone missing. Yes, we were recruiting Drovo Dovir. I know we don't usually recruit politicians, but we... Right, he has some good fighting skills, and he also has the bowl. No, we don't need another bowl. We need to get him back safely. So you don't have... Him. Okay, well, it's good to know you're not a kidnapper, but man, we've been hearing people say aboriginal children back on the fifth dominion and here in the second that was your thing right yes yes i get you didn't make it up but what does it mean and can you help us so you don't know where he is and you can't help us i asked around already i didn't get very far Well, things are very different around here without you. We don't have a sway. We do have a sway worker now and a talking bird. Oh. <laughs> Drovo's brother, but he doesn't like watching movies. Maybe we can change his mind, huh? Yes, please do. If you think of something, let us know. If you want to see the movie, you'll have to come over. Yeah, we're all really busy, man. All right, good talking. Invite oh, wait. Invite him over. Invite him oh, over. Oh, wait. We're, uh, can can we meet with you? Oh, he cut off the co the connection already. Well, hey. I hate to be that guy, guys, or that bird, but, uh, well, that was remarkably honest. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I find it highly suspicious that he's just like, I didn't kidnap anybody. Yeah, and he didn't yeah. know anything about the cult and stuff. I'm I'm sorry, Bentley. I know you run this place, but I'm skeptical. Nothing to see here. So how yeah. about you invite him to watch the Blair Witch Project tonight? And uh, I'll just follow him home after he's done and we can figure out where he lives. Well, he That's said he idea. was too busy to do that. Uh. Oh. And then okay. if it turns and then if it turns out that he's actually uh being deceptive, then we can just tie him up and let him watch Mac and me again. Ah! <laughs> Keep me out of that room. Over and over, and over again. <laughs> or the Emperor's new clothes. I'll press play. I'll do it. <laughs> um, I'll give you 50 bucks okay, if you so, take a poop on the Mac and me. So we're going to go ahead and call my cousin and see how she's doing. Okay. That you seems want, like so a dead end. Call Aldrin? Yes, and you have plenty of pictures on your phone, so all you have to do is kind of hold the hold the phone and look at. You can look at one of those pictures, and and uh, you just concentrate on it, like she showed you how to do. And she says, um, "And uh, so, yep, yeah, you you have to speak first, so she knows that you're there." Aldrin, or is everything okay? Oh, oh, uh, hello, uh, Musette. I, I should be asking you that. Well, we've been running into a lot of adventures, so I wanted to see how you were doing. Um, honestly, the excitement from your, suddenly your, uh, the, the um, Squad 43's entire base showing up in the Fugue, uh, nothing else has been happening. We've been requested to help in the African desert. 
uh, something about a, a, a prison in hell? I'm not sure. But um, so we may be going to help with that. But um, not much has happened. Are, are you OK? Uh, what about Squad 43? There's only one person here from that squad. Yes, as I said, many adventures. Uh, so my contact that you sent me to uh, to join, he was kidnapped by a bunch of people in robes and they had a car and they had a, a Nolianac. Have you heard of those before? I've definitely heard of a car. <laughs> uh, but but Anulianak, no, I I don't I don't know what that is. Um, um, uh, well, we're I, I met up with his brother uh, Chudervir, and then we also ran into uh, a few more characters. What can you tell me about the cult? They wore the, the, the person that you left behind is very unpleasant. Um, and apparently he got shot and was unconscious for the entire battle. So he can't give us any good information about what happened. Tell him about the Aboriginal children. Oh. Well, why don't you? <laughs> well, actually, you're the only... Because oh, it's, the only, it's oh, telepathic. Yeah, it's the, yeah. Yeah, I wrote that note down, sorry. Uh, so they were the these people in the robes or beings in the robes, they uh, were pushing everybody into the car and uh, they were shouting about Aboriginal children. That uh, sounds familiar. That sounds familiar. Can I can um, can I ask about that and then I'll call you right back? Sure. Yes, please. Oh, okay. So um, the the connection is is severed. All right. Looks like we got something to go by. We'll see what uh, what um, what your cousin comes up with. So nobody else is a little concerned. This Cassius Briar now knows we suspect him in your brother's kidnapping. Because uh, if the person that did have something to do with this does not seem like the kind of person that would sit idly by while they're being actively looked for. Well, I just asked Bentley to set up a meeting. I didn't tell him to give him our entire <laughs> suspicions. <laughs> well, do you guys have well, something like a phone book in this place? Well, he's an old friend. If he's a kidnapper, I want to know about it. Well, he's not just going to tell you. Yeah. Well, I would hope that he would because he's my friend. I, 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 I can understand that. I've had some friends I've been concerned about in the past. Look, Bentley, um, this this is yeah. not about you know. You're not a bad person for for being friends with him. It's just that he was my brother's uh, kind of political opponent. And this, he this still really, is actually. They're yeah. they're both um, they're both running for the Ezor Direxian Council. Yeah, and uh, all on the kind signs, of opposing platforms. Yeah, and all the signs point to that he might have been involved with this, even if indirectly, with his uh, the Aboriginal children. So we got to find a way to to find him. I mean, I don't. Maybe I should go back to the uh, Arcanum and see if my brother had any inkling of where Cassius might live. You guys he says, have "Oh, oh, book? hold on!" And he he uh, he 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 goes in next to the where the book was sitting. He he grabs a Polaroid picture of your brother. Mm -hmm. oh. And he says, "You you can ask him." Oh my God! Yes, and, yes, I, that's great, great idea. And, and just as uh, just as as uh, you he hands you that picture, Musette gets a, a message from Aldrin. Okay, says, Musette, hello. Are are you? Uh, can we talk? Yes. Okay, so the Aboriginal children is a strange sort of cult that's been popping up everywhere. Um, and in fact, uh, cults or gangs or, or anyone 
uh, terrorists. Any, uh, they've they've all had their original idea. Their orig original identity has sort of been transitioning into the Aboriginal children, and they all apply sort of slightly different meanings to it. Uh, a lot of it has to do with, you know, we were here first. This is our place. Uh, no one else is allowed. Um, uh, and okay. There's been a lot of anti-immigration sentiment. So maybe people that actually do align themselves with uh, Cassius's political views of trying to close everything down and separate all of the Dominions? From what we know, they don't know about any other worlds they seem to have been inspired by their leaders seem to have been inspired by a dream well that always ends well <laughs> i remember uh i remember a few days ago i was in a dream and at the end of the dream i remember an eye showed up and said uh was it beware the aboriginal children or so one one uh, sort of point of clarification is that mm. only Musette can hear what Aldrin mm -hmm. is saying. Okay, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Okay, so I'll have to ask her about that. Yeah, so you hear her side of the conversation because she's probably speaking out loud. Mm -hmm. Got it. Sorry, I'm taking notes. Oh, no problem. Okay. The, we don't really and know what's causing this or where they're coming from. Um, and is this in all dominions and everywhere? Sorry. All, all over the world. Yeah. Um, and we, we cannot pinpoint an origin of it, but it's been bad enough to get our attention. Is that uh, what you're more going so to take than just local of? authorities and, and uh, people who would normally handle this sort of thing. Okay. Is that what you're going to take care of in Africa? No, no, that's yeah. something different. Okay. Okay. Well, um, if you do me a favor and keep an eye out, if you hear anything about uh, Chodervir's brother uh, or anything suspicious about this Cassius Breyer person, have you heard of him? No, uh, no, no, I haven't, but. You, your squad runs pretty autonomously. So, um, Cassius Breyer. Okay. So, okay. So I do know that he was a member of squad 77. Um, but that's, and that he, uh, he left. Uh, yes, Bentley was telling us, though, that he's someone who is uh, running on a platform of trying to shut down the travel ways between the Dominions. Oh. And I don't know if that's something that's also tangentially related to the Aboriginal children. Who knows? I well, I guess we'll will, find out. Um, I'll, I'll ask around. Um, we don't have a lot going on here. Uh, we're the safest squad in the in in all of the Jericho squads, so there's not not much going on here. But I can research that for you. Okay, thank you, Aldrin. Glad you're how doing my, okay. How is my liar? Are you taking care of it? Yes. All right, good. I'm worried Thanks. about you. Okay. I, I, I was when you joined Jericho Squad. I was kind of hoping that you would stay with me where it's safe. That's okay. I've met a lot of uh, interesting characters. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Okay. Well, thank you. Thanks. Bye. I'll let you know what I find out. Okay. Okay. So what what did you say, Musette? Uh, I heard. She... Yes. She said that the Aboriginal children is a cult that has been popping up everywhere um, and that their leaders were inspired by a dream of some sort and they believe that they are the ones who own um, 
each of their lands and mm. they don't want uh, do you remember the dream that we had where we we've met some, we've met some of these squad members before in a dream you remember that we fought some creatures in an ice cave Vaguely. We're there. Does you anyone were else there. remember that? <laughs> and and for the people who didn't, who forgot the dream, now you're gonna feel like a weird sense of deja vu, but you can't quite picture it. Afraid to ask what y'all dreamed of me. I think everybody <laughs> remembered. You were there, yeah. and you were there, and he was there, and there was a <laughs> bird flying. All right, around. sit down, Dorothy. There was a tornado. I remember, yeah. <laughs> and at the end of the dream, I remember when there was like an eye showed up and it said something like Rem remember the aboriginal children or something like that so that seems ominous that seems connected to what we're working with but uh i guess the best thing to do now is i got a polaroid of my brother i can find out if he's okay let me let me um let me see if i can contact him and see if he's still alive real quick i want to get this straight so there's a cult going around kidnapping Aboriginal children. No, yeah. the cult no? is calls themselves <laughs> the Aboriginal children, from oh. from what I understand. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yes, the cult name is Aboriginal children. I'm more focused yeah. on my back. You just have to excuse it, it, me. It's also a little bit of an underground uh, political movement here in his order X. I, I, I didn't know a lot about it because I just read a lot and I'm stuck in the arcanium most of my time so my brother would know a lot more about that i don't know why i'm getting involved in politics i can't even vote <laughs> have more french toast oh no i can't if i have any more i will bill a fly so lie down <laughs> i've been surreptitiously stealing everybody's french toast while we're talking <laughs> okay guys this is it i'm gonna see if i can contact drovo my brother see if he's all right Bentley, can wing, you help me? I'm gonna wing bump Zoe and be like, yeah, see, yeah. this is what um, happens when places don't have Steve Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> so So he he uh he turns the page to the or he hands you the Polaroid and uh and he says, here you this stone is for you. You can use this one. Okay, thank you, Bentley. So I'm gonna you just put focus that... on it and uh okay. and and the picture. I'm focusing on the picture. I'm putting the picture in my head and I'm concentrating. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Drovo, are you there? Drovo, can you hear me? Sure, sure. Are, yes, are you yes. here with me? I, I, it's dark. I can't see. Drovo, I'm, I'm communicating with you from the Jericho 77 headquarters. I've uh, I've met a lot of friends, and we're trying to release you. Where are you? Do you know where you are? You you, you survived? Yes, yes, Drovo. We survived, but we saw them take you away, and we were powerless to stop it. We tried following you, the car, but unfortunately, we got mugged along the way, and we lost track of you. So, are you okay? Uh, I'm. I think so. I think I I'm. I'm chained to a chair. There's a desk in front of me. It's dark. So, Drovo, it seems like you were taken by, by cultists from the Aboriginal children. Um, I'm suspecting Cassius Breyer. Do you think he could have done something like this? Whoa. Uh, I... That's pretty low. That would be pretty low. I I I haven't seen him. Okay. I don't I don't I don't think I I don't think I've seen him. Uh but I I woke up here in this chair. Um I I'm healed up. I'm not injured. That's good. That's good, Drovo. Um, so there's no window in your cell. There's nowhere you can figure out where you, they might have taken you. Any sounds around you that might identify which area of Azorderex you are, even if you're in Azorderex. I hear 
talking sometimes outside the door. Uh, they're, they mostly speak English, some gloss. Um, uh, there's movement of, I hear movement of boxes. Uh, we're, the floor is wooden. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think this is a jail cell. Well, uh, the, the Nolianak, I've heard him speak. Did he say something where about what their plan is or were they what they're planning to do with you? Did someone interrogate you? Not so far. I haven't spoken to anyone. They I've just been here in the dark. I've shouted out to them, but uh, no one replies. Hmm. Well, I've got your photo with me, so I'll be able to communicate with you. So I'll try to communicate regularly if we find out anything. But if you hear any, yeah, you can't call me, so I'd have to call you. But you know, just stay safe. Uh, we're on. We're trying to figure out where you are, and we're going to rescue you. Okay. Oh, I don't put yourself in danger on my account. Do you have the Jericho Squad with you? Yes, and the Boston Bowl is safe. Good, good. Uh, it seems like they might have wanted to take the bowl. Do you have any idea what they might have wanted to do with it? Well, it's... Um, help see the future? Yeah, yeah. I, we tried... I mean, anyone would want that. Yeah. We tried that. We didn't really get anything that we could interpret. But uh, sit tight. We'll, we're working on trying to find you, okay? Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, uh, this gives me a little hope, but be safe. I will. I will. All right, guys. I, I talked to my brother. It seems like he's, uh, he's in the dark room. Unfortunately, he can't give us any indication of where he might be. I don't think anybody's talked to him since he woke up. Uh, he healed up. He's fine. And I, I asked him if he thought that Cassius might have anything to do with it, but he thinks that that would be really low of him. It seemed like he didn't really believe that Cassius might have done this, but uh, I still have my suspicions. So unfortunately, there's nothing he told us that could help us figure out where he is. So I'm... I, I, I still need help. I still need to figure out. We need to figure out where Cassius lives. Um, oh, anybody got he was any part ideas? of Jericho Squad. Bentley, do you have something like a room of records, other than these Polaroids? That's about. That's all we've got. Jesus, who's running this place? <laughs> Me. <laughs> oh well. Uh, well was he a toast? <laughs> was he? Uh connected to anyone that we could possibly go uh, check in with to see maybe, you know, maybe last point of contact? Um, I'm kind of his last point of contact that I know of. Oof. That's great. Okay. So you can't okay. track these photographs? Like what? Maybe we I, get I a got GPS some stuff bank. to sell you from the Fifth Dominion if... Uh... Mm. <laughs> Maybe I should use the Boston Bowl and see if we can, if we can see the future and find find out where he might be if he shows up in the vision. I'm, What's the Boston Bowl? So the Boston Bowl, I, I pull it out of my bag and I say the Boston Bowl is this bowl that has these colored rocks in it, and then if we focus on it, the rocks start jumping around and they ultimately create uh, images of the future that we can look at and interpret. Uh, it takes a lot of focus, takes a lot of energy, but I guess I, I could try using that. There's a knock at the door upstairs. Bentley says, oh crap, we were supposed to be open 10 minutes ago. And he, he runs up the, up the stairs. Okay. Um, now, I have a question. Do that. <laughs> Sorry. I have a question. Um, these images of the future, are they guaranteed or are they just as we are now? Assuming that we don't make any choices that would change our destiny. Hmm. 
So the future is always in flux. So thank uh, you. Yeah, because the DM doesn't <laughs> does not have magical powers. <laughs> yeah. So roll dice. It helps to see what what is to come, but but afterwards, if you do something that changes that, you know, obviously you're going to change the future. But it's still a lead we could take. Yeah, I I agree. I agree. I don't no mind leave. good old-fashioned leg work. I'm kind of flat my wings. Uh huh. <laughs> um. So. Okay, Bentley's upstairs, right? Yeah. You so can hear what? some sort of uh, mumbling, and or you hear some muffled, a uh, muscle muffled voice, but uh, you can't really make out what they're saying. Okay. Should I use the Boston Bowl without Bentley yes. being here? I, I vote yes. Just do it. Okay. Um, all right. So I pull out the Boston Bowl and let me get my equipment here. The Boston Bowl says, perhaps the most accurate prophetic tool. Blah blah blah. Has forty-one colored stones. I make a DC ten Wisdom save, or take one point of psychic damage. So it came what? with its own instruction manual. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if your eyes melt, may I eat them? So. Yeah, we were sure. To the store. <laughs> so this DC 10 wisdom save, what do I do here, Ryan? So you, you uh, roll a 20-sided die okay. and uh, add your wisdom um, saving throw bonus if you have one. Okay, I roll 20. I got a 14. So you look at the saving throw section there. Saving throw. And you see the wisdom number? Um, wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. I have plus four wisdom. So you got an 18 and you just, you needed to beat a 10. Okay. So you're fine. You didn't, it did not hurt your brain to use okay. the Boston bowl. All right. So okay. I use the Boston bowl. I focus and the stones start swirling yeah. around. What do I see? So the, the, the stones whirl around and you see, um, the, the colors start to coalesce into, um, into a vision and you see the upstairs of the store, uh, and you see your group looking kind of haggard and uh and drovo is with you and you all enter the store and uh drovo um kind of wanders uh, into the back and he grabs a gun he grabs a, a rifle and he shoots bentley with it what um i was like guys this is not good um this is not good. You guys saw it, right? I mean, do you think Bentley might be in league with Cassius? I I have no idea what's going on. The setup? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's... What, That's a bummer. He's yeah. my movie buddy. Well, maybe we don't want to go save this guy. Mm. Sorry. Well, he's my brother. I mean, I trust my brother. I don't think that he would do anything that wouldn't be justified. Um, I am very, very conflicted. Um, well, does Bailey have a bedroom down there? Where does he sleep? Yeah, he does. He does have a bedroom down there. Should should we go, is gonna lie in wait. Should we go check in one of the hexagonal chamber doors? Let, let's yeah, see let's if we go can rough, find. Let's go turn his room over. Yeah, do what let, I do best. <laughs> okay, all right. So I follow the squawking seagull into Bentley's room. And, there might uh, be stuff in there you're not supposed to see, guys. Yeah. 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 That's, so that's how do I do this? I, I examine my surroundings. That makes me pretty uncomfortable. Oh, wait, who's next? So when you go in, um, you see uh, his bed is not made. Uh, there are posters on the walls of late 90s movies. Mm -hmm. uh, typically the more forgettable ones. There's like Volcano and Dante's Peak. <laughs> and uh... Love this guy's taste. <laughs> yeah. Robot and uh, six days and seven nights with Harrison Ford. I saw that at a drive-in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, 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 what do I do? Is it my turn now? Do I examine my surroundings? Yeah, yeah, we're yeah, not in combat, right so you can, stuff, you can just say drawers. what you want to do. Okay, so yeah, I, I'm gonna Your rustle through. The coats hung up. Yeah, so What's does he have a chest? Is there a chest in his room or something, or? A, of the furniture that I can open there, up a drawer. There's a there's a wardrobe. It's a wardrobe. Okay. 
So I open the wardrobe and look inside. Um, just just some clothes. I mean, you make you, you make an investigation check. Okay, investigation check. So you roll uh, twenty sided die and add the investigation uh, bonus onto that. Okay. Which yours would be kind of high because you're a wizard. I got. And it's based on 19. intelligence. Nineteen. Okay. Yeah. Plus something. Investigation. I have plus five, so I have okay. twenty-four. Wow, that's really good. Um, yeah, I, it seems all pretty straightforward. You don't find anything that would seem incriminating or. Is there? A, I look for switches or, or secret compartments inside the wardrobe. Uh, no, no, there. Yeah, there isn't anything. Hmm. Does he have any other? Just... Any other furniture in the bedroom or under his bed? Um, not, yeah, not really. It's messy, um, but uh, you don't really find anything that seems uh, untoward. Is there anything behind the posters? Any of the posters? Oh. Do you want to untack them from the walls? Well, I mean, you just kind of like lift up the side. Okay. Uh, you, you just just the wall. You don't see anything. Does he have a VCR in the room? Shame. He doesn't. No. He, he doesn't have a television or VCR. No, he just uses the ones upstairs. Um, Does he have any books? Any books? Yeah. Um. He has a set of cookbooks. Um, the one, and there's one slot missing where the the one that he got the French toast recipe out of is, isn't there. Um, he has a book on on uh, weapon maintenance. Let's dig through the books. Okay. See if there's any hidden any information in them. Okay. And as you start to do that, uh, you hear his footsteps coming down the stairs. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so, I don't know if I have time for that, but can I check for magic? Well, detect magic or something? Real quick and try to meet him on the stairs. And be like, yeah. Hey, I need to go, the, need to go to the bathroom. Where do you get something to eat around here? You know, I think I need to go out. Well, hey, hey, Jonathan, there's there's a bathroom right well, over there. I don't have hands. Can you just let me outside? Can you just go open the door for me? Uh, uh, you know, uh, whatever. Okay, and he, he goes up the <laughs> stairs. Okay. Uh, so he leads you as he leads you up the stairs, and um, he says, "You know, Jonathan, this is really important. I needed to talk to the rest of the group." And uh, well, and as you as you walk upstairs, you see a, a robed uh, hooded figure, and his head has a really unnatural shape. Uh, when when you look closer, he's his head looks like two praying hands, with oh, eyes uh, and uh, thumbs. Oh no! Well, I uh, like oh Bentley. Well, um, before I go out. Uh, would you maybe be able to tell me what's going on here? And I want to cast Charm Person on him. So the uh, the the creature looks over at you, and it, it, when you start talking, and he says, "Why does your pet talk?" <laughs> and Bentley says, "Ah, uh, that uh, the, that that was me. I threw my voice." Pretty good, huh? <laughs> and it uh, it just looks at both of you. But um, charm person, okay. I gotta pull up that. What's the save for that? Uh, DC is thirteen. I believe it's wisdom. Okay. Twenty-two. Well, that's uh, not gonna work. When it fails, he knows that you did it, right? I believe so. Yeah, when it's when it ends, which 
failing, I think, yeah. just ending. They know. The, uh, the, the creature uh, pulls out two swords and starts to look threateningly at you and at Bentley, and he says, this seems like some sort of a trick. You were to get your members and you brought up a bird. He says, just, okay, well, this is, I'll, I'll go get them. And he says, may I kill the bird? <laughs> he says, no, no, just. That would not. That would not be good. Just, just wait a minute. And he go. He goes down the stairs. So I would be like hopping on tables, and just chairs, and try to get kind of up in a, um, like if there's a high shelf that's kind of a little bit behind, the where the uh, creature's standing. Okay. Yeah. Kind of yeah. There, in, there is look, look. on the same wall that the door is. There is a, a shelf full of like knickknacks and and things that you would recognize from uh, from Earth. Is there any jewelry? Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, there is. Um, there's a set. What should be a set of earrings, but it's missing one. Uh, Are they like diamonds? There, there's a a belt. Um, you see a ring. Do any of the stones look like a diamond? Um, make an investigation check. You're gonna Five. steal from Bentley. Five? Yeah, um, they're shiny. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know. Um, okay, so you guys hear Bentley coming down the stairs. Okay, um, again. yeah, let's get out of his bedroom <clears throat> and, and, uh, gather back in the center close to the portal okay make a stealth check i okay, guess everybody that check. wants to be sneaky and try not to alert alert him that you are rifling through his things okay that's i roll an 11 and my stealth is plus two okay so that's 12 or 13. does everybody have to do a stealth check yeah i got okay. a seven Ooh. I'm not, I mean, look at me. I can't be really stealthy to begin with. <laughs> okay. Well, um, anybody else? Yeah, I yeah. got a seven, two, and wow. I got a plus three, so a 10. Not great. Okay. I got a 14 plus two. That's nice. pretty good. Okay. So, so, um, Zoe and Chur, uh, managed to, to kind of, um, sneak out and, and uh, get into their tables really fast. But uh, Musette and Ralph sort of trip on each other, and Ralph kind of clips his uh, his his backhand on the side of the doorway, and they ah. kind of trip over each other into the in the doorway. And and uh, Bentley comes down. And he goes, "What's go hey? What what are you doing?" I'm just gonna lay here and die. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Musette, why were you in my room? Ralph was in there and got stuck. I was looking why for the was toilet. Ralph? Ralph, why were you in my room? I was looking for the toilet. I, in, in hindsight, I don't know why. I, I it's not like I could use it. <laughs> Make a deception check. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I have to make Bentley do a. An Is that everybody or just Ralph? No, just Ralph, because he's lying about the bathroom, so he's got to make yeah. a deception check. That was this a one? good. That was a good lie, though, by the way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Roll a twenty-sided yeah. die and add deception bonus to it. Okay, so let's see here. What's my deception bonus? If you go to so the the list of skills down oh, in the middle there. I got a twenty plus two. Wow, twenty-two. Well, he got yeah. a five. He says, "All right, all right. Well, you, you know." I don't know why you thought the bathroom was in my room, but it's not. So, you know, come on. I need to talk to you guys about something. He my says, looks like a I'm just kind of apprehensive. I heard that. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kind of apprehensive, like standing next to the portal, just waiting to see what he wants to say. 
There's a Nolianac upstairs. Uh, what? <laughs> since there aren't very many, since we've only ever heard it about one Nolianac, I'm guessing it's the same one. He wants to see you, sure. I've, I'm not going to meet him. Um, I, 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 you know, I mean, is he, is he, uh, it, did he come with cultists? Did he threaten you? What, what did, what did he do? Should we just get out of here through the portal? He said he heard that I was asking around about him. No. Oh. He wants to talk. He wanted to, uh, talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. Brent and, was right. Uh, we raised the suspicions. Darn it. He um, wants to talk to you about your brother. Yeah, and when I go upstairs, he's going to, you know, grab me and kidnap me, too. Um, well, one thing, I, case, want, one thing I have to say about this. You probably know this already, Chur, but guns are not legal for citizens to own in Isordirex. So mm -hmm. if you have guns, hide them. Okay. All right. So okay. uh, some of us have guns. I guess they have to hide them. Only the Isordorexian militia are allowed to have guns. Okay. You know what? But I'm well, I'm out of clues, so. I... Um, hold on though. If I cast protection from evil and good with the liar, um, and then Chodevir goes up and talks, maybe that get a little bit of extra protection. Hmm. You can all come up if you want. I would recommend it. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, maybe, maybe they want to negotiate. Maybe they want to explain what's going on, but, um, I'm going to, I have my spells prepared and, uh, I'm going to cast mage armor before I go good upstairs. Choice. Okay. Yeah. Good idea. I think that one doesn't even cost you a spell slot anymore. Right. Or no, that's uh that's, that's a uh, Joe's Never mind. Uh, let's see. How do I cast that? Uh, so you, yeah, you just click the cast button on your character. Okay. Sheet, I, a uh, little red square slot. showed up in my slot. Okay. So, so that's keep, cast. Yeah. And, and it'll show up on second level spell slots too. Don't, I, I wouldn't do that because uh, that'll waste your second level spell slot, but spells okay. can be cast at a higher level. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So I cast that and I go upstairs and, Whoa, uh, Joe's on fire. Joe's on fire on fire yeah i mean i have felt like my body temperature is gonna rise well it looks like there's smoke coming out of you on your video i don't know why i know right it's a guy it's green a good screen one. going on oh okay. okay so so we go upstairs i go upstairs at least you know yeah i go upstairs i don't know if everybody else wants to and go. and uh and um jonathan's already up there hopping around on the shelves right annoying the nolly yeah. Okay. So I guess I'll save yeah, that spell since he just like wandered off. <laughs> okay. So I go upstairs. I open the door and I see the Nullianak. Okay. It says, "I recognize you." And I recognize you. Where is my brother? I will take you to him. No, you will tell you me where he is. I'm not going anywhere may... with you. You may take him back with you after you're done. So who do you work for? I work for myself. What guarantee do I have that if I went with you anywhere that you wouldn't just take me like you took my brother? What, what, what's your purpose? My purpose is the way of the aboriginal children. So uh, I'm, I'm going to say, yeah, I'm not going anywhere with you. You have to tell me where my brother is, or we're going to we're going to do more than just exchange words. If you kill me here, you will never know where your brother is. OK, quick aside, <laughs> there's still a few of us downstairs. We were abandoned. Oh, okay. OK. So we're just going to go upstairs. Okay. Right? All Ralph right. and Zoe, we're all going. We run upstairs. Now we're all in the same room. 
I'm, I'm, so, I'm on the do, way. Ralph and, and Zoe, do you go upstairs also? Yeah, just, just, just give me a second. Okay. I'm, I'm on my way. Just go on oh, without wow. me. <laughs> okay, okay. Are you um, on the Death Star? I'm in Mount Who's Grayskull. That? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, right, yeah. I mean, I was letting give it, letting you guys have the opportunity to say if you wanted to come upstairs or not. Uh, all right, so... Uh, I, he's got a point. I, I turn back and I tell you guys, he's got a point. I mean, if we attack him and kill him, um, we're going to be right back to square one. Um, you can go with him if you want. Hmm. Well, if we all go, what do you think guys? Should we all go with him or should just me go with him? I think we should split up. I think we should split up, yeah. Okay. Two two and three. Okay. So I have mage armor on. Um okay, yeah. I'll 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 do it. I'll 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 walk over to the Nullianak. Is his stance like is he like threatening or is he just standing he does there? Have, he does seem to have his knives out, but he didn't he hasn't like threatened you with them. Okay. All right, the seagull knows why. Oh, the seagull knows why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. Um, I guess I will go also with Chordevere. Uh, okay. Zoe and Ralph and Jonathan, y'all are going to stay here with Bentley? I just have to say, I have no I idea know. what I'm doing. <laughs> But um, I'm yeah, shaking let's... my head no behind the Nelly neck ah, okay. on the shelf. No, right. no. Okay. No, like don't go. <laughs> Dang it! You you have te- no telepathy, don't you? Um, does Jonathan? He can speak no, telep- telepathy. I have no telepathy. Ah, yeah, uh, I was going to ask if anyone did to be I, able to I, talk to him. I don't think I do either. I'm very apprehensive about this. Well, I just, I have... Okay, I'll like nod my head like this and just hop down behind the Nellianak and try to push my way out the door. Like start flapping against the gla- the window or whatever, like I'm a bird stuck inside. Okay, okay. So, all right. So I guess we all see him do that. So we all understand what he's saying, right? You're saying don't go with him. Um. He's got his knives out. I mean, why would I even go with him if he's got his knives out? Okay, it's I'm the gonna quickest say, way to your brother. Are, are you gonna true. Are you gonna say that, or are you just thinking no, it? No, I'm just thinking it. Shit. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's the quickest I, way I, to your brother, and then the only one that could the, the quickest person to get to you would be uh, Livingston. Okay. Okay, I'll I'll uh, hop around the room a little bit more. How's the Nolly neck reacting? And then I guess hop up on Cho Devere's shoulder. Livingston should he, go he with Shadow Beer. He kind of is tracking you with, uh, with no, his I'll knives. I'll kind of nod my head at that. Do the duck. That's my. That's my. That's what I um, nominate. He okay. says, "Tell me more about this bird." Um. Well, he's, he's, he's not. I want to hop on Shadow Beer's shoulder and <laughs> just shit. Of... And oh no! Just, like, get off! <laughs> like, flap, flap off! Oh. Okay, I just say, well, he's just a he's just a pet. Okay, well, right after you, Nolianak, uh, I'll follow. I follow him out the door. Okay, so he opens the door, and uh, out in the street outside, you see sort of a a pickup truck that's been sort of converted to like a flatbed, so that people can pile on there. It's not very safe, but you can sit on there. Okay. Uh, there are two of the cultists outside. I, uh, so Musette is with me, right? Ralph and Zoe are inside the store. Uh, I whispered to you. burst out and take off. Oh, man, I was going to whisper to you. Okay. Um, okay. Hmm. Well, I guess I came out. Hmm. I see the cultists. I, I, when I see the cultists, I guess I get even more apprehensive. Ah, dang it. I, I don't know if I should start a what combat. What kind of truck is it? 
It, it's like How an old condition 50s. does it look to be in? It, it's it's kind of an old late. It's like a late fifties pickup truck, and with okay. the back half has been removed and turned and uh, and and a wooden platform has been put mm -hmm. where the pickup part was. So it's not like anyone. Well, I guess I'll just go on fly it. on top of the truck and sit on top of the cab. Okay. Okay, your body language is telling me to sit on the cab. Um, <laughs> so I guess I'll do that. I guess I'll I'll if you're not telling me anything, I'm I'm going to go sit on the cab. Yeah, I'm trying well, not to talk. We've already agreed to go. Yeah. And we're just going. And okay. we're just going to assume are... that they, they are going to be diplomatic. Hmm. Yeah. Are the uh, cultists they're... in the flatbed or are they driving the car? I would not go in assuming they're going to be diplomatic. Just let them think you're assuming that. I hate everything. <laughs> <laughs> you're still inside the house. Uh, well, right. well, yeah. Where is everybody right now? So I'm apparently, outside. I'm outside. Yeah. Uh, Ralph, Zoe, you guys are inside. Are you yeah. guys looking okay. out, seeing us, or something? Are you guys going to come out outside or not? They know this was up here. Mm. I'm kind of freaked out a little bit because we're oh. Oh, that's loud. Oh. Music, too loud. Yeah. Hold up. There we go. Okay, so I am not okay, I'm, I'm sitting on the flatbed of the truck. I'm 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 ready. Okay. Where's okay, I'm gonna take off and like essentially try to hide, like make it look like I just like left, right? Like I just flew away. So you're just gonna be tracking us. That that's a okay. safe assumption. All right, then. I think I keep up with old, or at here, least keep so an old gonna... 50s truck in sight. Okay. All right, so is every everybody's on the truck? So we're all we're all just going then. Is That's that what I'm happening? asking. Oh. You can make a decision whether you want to come out and sit or if you want to stay behind. I mean, that's going to affect how the story goes, but you know, you're free to do whatever you want. Where's everyone going? Okay, as of right now, uh, Musette, Chaudevere, Jonathan are with the Anolianac and the cultist, but Jonathan is flying above, and Zoe and Ralph are inside, but they can still join because the truck hasn't left. Well, what do you think, a little bit? You think we should go too? Let's go. Let's join the party. Let's go. Okay. Uh, so you, you climb onto the, the back of the truck and and sure is sitting on top of the cab. <laughs> Am I? That, okay. That's what you said. You wanted to go sit with Jonathan on top of the cab of the truck. No, oh, no, I didn't that. say that. Yeah, I said I'm sitting on the I'm sitting on the flatbed. Yeah, you said okay. on the cab. You said on the cab. Okay, no, I'm <laughs> just sitting on the back of the truck. <laughs> okay, I'm so you, you, that the you truck all find a place to route. sit on the on the flatbed. You kind of have to hang on to the sides to 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 keep yourselves from rolling off. Cool, that's badass. So this Let's is like a it. military yeah. truck. It can yeah. hold Ralph. It's a pickup truck with a with a wooden flatbed yeah. that it, I'll probably It's kind of being through. used in that way, but it's not the safest. And um. <laughs> The, one uh, one thing. of the cultists <laughs> rides in the back with you guys, and one is get one gets into the cab um, and draw and, and drives, and the Nullian X sits in the passenger seat. Okay. So one cultist with four of us. I like those odds. Who, and we just ate some raw French toast. <laughs> <laughs> it's on. <laughs> it's not raw. It was he cooked it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that happened on set. Oh, really? That's not my fault. I was not there. Our cook that day got the whole crew sick. Oh. Okay, action music. Okay. So um, you're you're driving down the roads. Sure, you know this area pretty well. Um, you're heading into what looks like sort of an industrial area of town. 
the cultist, the, 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 the cultist kind of looks at each of you, uh, except for Jonathan, because you're Jonathan, you're flying, right? Yeah, I was going to try to stay pretty high up in the air and just look like a normal bird flying around, but keep track as you get where you guys are going. Okay. Okay. Um, so he, the, the, the cultist lo looks at each one of you and kind of grunts. Uh, he looks at uh, Musette and Sure, especially kind of with uh, anger. He's one of the he. Um, he was one of the group that kidnapped Drovo. Ah, uh, can I just like start up a conversation with him? Yeah. Like, so what's your story, dude? I serve the Aboriginal children. You know We've been that... hearing a lot about them. You want to tell us more? The Aboriginal children were born of Hapeximendios, the unbeheld. Just, just a hair down on the on the, on the tune, please. Okay, yeah, I was wondering. Yeah. It's tricky because when I turn the volume down, then I can't hear you guys. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, wait, sorry. The, I can stop it also. The children of what? Hapeximendios? The unbeheld. The unbeheld. Are you a non-believer? He's unbeheld. How do you know he's there? <laughs> I think he just said Are you some making heresy a there. joke? <laughs> so, the first children of Apexamendios, weren't they the Nullianax? Yes. Okay. The Nullianax and the Righteous. Okay. And you guys are taking us to my brother then? That's correct. Yeah, I sit back. Okay. okay. So, you got a lot you guys take Drovo. I think I'm going to turn that off so I can hear you. Sure. Take so, I, I mean, I don't think I'm going to get any more information out of this guy. Um, I don't really have any sort of okay. charm or anything, do I? I believe I do, right? Oh. Isn't that like built in? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Person? Yeah. Sure, that would be interesting to see if book. we can get more information. There's nobody he, uh, following them. Like, sure, and he says, there's not another killed truck. my friend. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember. Uh, well, you guys shot my brother. He attacked us first. Uh, well, yeah, guess why? Because you guys were trying to shove him into a car. We put him in the car after he attacked us. Mm -hmm. So why did you guys come to the Arcanum? What was your purpose? We wanted to speak to your brother. Yeah, it didn't seem like you guys were coming in to do some friendly speaking. It's not a friendly world these days. You're telling me. Um... Okay, so is my brother all right? What what did you want to talk to him about? I mean, I'm his brother. You know, I know stuff about what he's doing. So maybe I could give you some answers. He thinks about that. For, well, make a persuasion check. Okay, persuasion. So 20 sided yeah. die. We got a seven. Okay. Uh, persuasion minus one. So I got a six. A six. Okay. Um. This would be okay. Wow, he, he didn't get he didn't he did a little better than you. Um, so he says that's we'll let the Nolian Act tell you that when we arrive. Okay, but remember, I still have my silken sword, and you shall remember the bite of it if you're trying to trick us. You brought a weapon. He pulls out his knife. Yeah, congratulations. We both got weapons. Toodle do. <laughs> he knocks on the, the glass in the cab. Oh, and God. the the, uh, the Nolianak opens the, the window and says, what? He says, hey, they're armed. And the truck stops. Oh. 
they're not guns, you know. It's, it's perfectly legal. I have a permit. <laughs> so the the Nolianac comes around the back of the truck with the other cultist, and he says, "You came prepared to fight." He was holding the knives. <laughs> I was like, you were holding knives. You looked at me. I have my weapon, like, I have my sword here. It's part of, you know, who I am. It's my ceremonial sword. It's not, I'm not trying to attack you. I'm just, it's just part of me. Every, every Rethemek, you know, in the Arcanum has a, a silken sword. I'm, Do the rest uh, of you have weapons? Yes, but also we are trusting you by voluntarily going with you. Oh, and nothing I has nothing happened yet. None shooting. of us have tried to instigate anything. The bird put a so, sway on me. He's just a bird. <laughs> what a bird? little white off. What bird? Okay, There's make, no bird make a deception here. check. Oh, me? Oh, yeah. A uh, 10. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Oh, uh, okay, plus three, he says, 13. Yeah, so you 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 beat him anyway. He says uh he 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 looks around and is, uh, where is Jonathan right now? I I'm just circling really high up cuz I've got very good vision. So I I shouldn't be rec like I don't know, I might then just a bird okay. flying around. I assume there's other birds flying around. Yeah. Probably even other He, he looks up and he he's, he looks up and he sees you and he says, "Is that the same bird?" You know what a seagull is? You know how many seagulls there are? <laughs> Who knows? I, I think it's a different bird. Probably scared him away. Thanks. He was our only friend. Did you come <laughs> to attack us? Like I said, wouldn't we have attacked you where we were more comfortable? Over at Bentley's? Not if, if you want our to see intent was to attack again. I thought that we were just trying to find out what happened with Drovo. Look, Nalianak, you said you wanted to talk to us, and we got into your car, and we're on our way. Can we get to wherever we want to, you want us to go and talk? Nalianak sounds like he has some trust issues. Sorry, that's just my perception. <laughs> <laughs> Did did did, uh, did Ralph say that? Yes. Okay. Ralph is an asshole. <laughs> no, no, he's, he 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 looks at you. He says, "I do have trust issues. <laughs> I am not trusting you at all." <laughs> Fair enough. We don't trust you either. He says, Look Ralph, at your truck. It could break down at any minute. We're stranded. I say we're trusting your truck a lot. I will introduce myself. I am twenty eight. It's a lovely name. What are your names? Well, you know who I am. I'm Drovo's brother, Chur. Chur Dovier. Yes. I'm Musette. Musette. I'm Musette, too. <laughs> I'm Ralphie. Ralph. Musette, too. I'm Zoe Mason. Zoe Mason. We are bringing you here, sure, to convince your brother. Convince the brother of what? To renounce his ways. Oh, that withdraw. should be all right. To renounce his ways. Uh, so this is about from politics his, his, from the with his Ordiarexian council. I'm sorry, what? To withdraw from the Ordiarexian council. That's a tall order. Um, I can't. I can't make that decision for my brother. I guess we'll have to uh, to talk to Chertovir when we get there. You are Chertovir. Uh, the Drovo. He gets himself confused with his brother from time to time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're twins. 
Uh, yeah, I, I can't make that decision for Drovo. I guess you'll have to take us to Drovo and then you can present your case and we'll we'll see what he has to decide. This was what we came to discuss with your brother when he attacked us. Okay. Well, what, you know, so you're taking us there so we can convince him, so we can take him back? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, well take us to my brother. I mean, I don't know why we're stopped here in the middle of the road talking about this when someone know. started talking about swords. You yeah. threatened my associate. He's okay. an easily person. He's easily threatenable. Hey, listen, he he attacked me first uh, when he kidnapped my brother. I just defended myself and you know, I was just saying that I would do that again if it turns out to be a trap. Okay. Can we just move that particular cultist into the inside of the car and then we go again? Oh, you want to swap the swap them? Yeah, they're obviously not getting along. Yeah. And I would like to be able to get to the next place. Yeah, we need to we need to separate them. Show to Veer, you're in timeout. He says, This will be done. And he says, You <laughs> drive. And so the they they uh, switch places. <laughs> Chinese fire and drill. Yeah. Okay, so they, they get back into the car and uh, and start the engine and start up again. God. Okay, we're back on uh, in motion. Okay, no more talk of weapons, dudes. Okay. So we're just going to have to keep you separated from everyone, Shred of Beer. Got to keep them separated. Ah. <laughs> All right, so we're moving, right? Yeah. Okay, so um, is there any any other anything else you want to talk about with this other cultist before we arrive? <laughs> I'm not saying another word until we get there. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So. So. Oh, go ahead. I have a question. Actually, mm -hmm. yes. Um, since the Anolianak said his name is 28, I well. Does the cultist know um, it, it, that the implication is that there's obviously a one through 28 as far as the Nolian acts are concerned. So does the cultist know that information? Um, he says, well, the Nolian acts were revived from the mud in the first dominion uh, when they woke up. And I assume you're not from here and you don't know the history of the Nullian Acts or the Unbeheld. Uh, when they woke up, they no longer had the hive mind that they had and they didn't know what to call themselves. So they gave themselves numbers. Do I know about the events of the reconciliation? Yeah, yeah, I, I okay. think so. It's kind of widely celebrated. Right. Yeah, but so you I didn't know that the that the Nullian acts came back. Right. That they right. were resurrected out of the mud. So I say, okay, so so the mud of the first dominion, when the waters came, they brought the Nullian acts back after the reconciler uh, ended Ekpex Amendios. Okay, so they're back now. And and who do they serve? They serve themselves. They serve the memory of Hapeximendios and what he stood for. Okay, okay. I lean back because I'm not talking to this guy anymore. Okay. He kind of eyes you and, and Musette. Mm. Team Reconciler. <laughs> Do you say that? No, no, I don't. I don't. Please, okay. I don't want. I don't want to get involved into another argument. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so, any other any other uh, discussion on the on the trip? Yeah, I, I have a question. Okay. Uh, how many? Uh, how many? Just curious. How big uh, their collective is? Their tribe? Their people? If they're only if you know we're meeting twenty eight and everybody's numbered now. I heard 35, but I've only met uh, 28. It's a nice I mean, family. I've only met 28, the individual in the truck with us. 
I haven't met the others. Mm. Looks like this it's awesome, right? Cool. We've got uh, we've got Hepexamendios's army back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's great. And so are they driving out of town or are we still in town? Yeah, yeah you're, you're heading kind of deeper into a more industrial area okay. of town. Okay. Well, car goes zoom zoom. We're going to go there to fight RoboCop. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's, that's cool. I didn't even notice the, the map of the truck. <laughs> Rob, Rob job, you put Rob. that together really quick, huh? Yeah, I was just in case yeah, you just... fought. <laughs> yeah, it looks good. <laughs> That's what I was saying about it. Go zoom, zoom, because there was a little like cloud of, uh, yeah. cloud of smoke behind I'll, it. I'll share that so that uh, people can see it. There it is. Zoom, zoom. That's the actual sound it makes. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yep, you never know when battle's gonna break out, and it's it's tough because we had to we yeah. have to plan these maps in advance. Uh, Especially with this group. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, though, to cheer to Beard's defense, that one guy was totally a dick. Oh I yeah, agree. yeah, I agree. Yeah. Hey, it's, it's my sword, my nice sword you know, and I did. Thank I you did for being more polite, him. dude. <laughs> He says, I uh, understand. I think that I think that we got off on the wrong foot. And I do I want you to know that it wasn't so much a kidnapping as Mr. 28 had knocked him unconscious and he was dying. And so we figured we'd better do something about it. He's a well respected uh, political candidate. Hmm. Okay. That's a weird way to say kidnapping, but okay. Yeah. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. <laughs> He's so respected. Watch it not my conscious. <laughs> right? What's that? I said if he said respected, why'd you knock him unconscious? <laughs> uh he 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 saw us standing outside his the library and he rushed us. He started attacking Mr. 28. I would like to hear his side of the story, just to, you know, piece it all together. Well, just... you, you'll be able to talk to him soon. Yeah. How soon? Uh, well, actually, it looks like we're, we're, uh, we're approaching, so very soon. But but we ask um, so the and the, and the, the truck pulls up to a warehouse. Uh, it's a a big old wooden uh, barn shaped warehouse, and it's got uh, it's got barn style swing doors. There are uh, cultists, uh, two cultists. Um, actually, no, just the cultists are in the truck. Get out and stand in front of the door. I got a bad feeling about this. Why do they, <laughs> they always they, uh, have open the, the barn doors? Uh, kind of swing open wide and okay. the Nolianac gets out of the truck and he says sure please come with me the rest of you can wait out here are there windows no are there any windows no i'll no kind windows. of approach from the other side and just land on the roof okay it's a giant for other ways in giant solid fortress with only one well actually entry. i take that back I, there, there there are there's one window on each side uh just for natural light um they're glass and they're small are they guarded right no well i mean not from the outside they're not okay um so he asked me to follow him in there um yeah real fast is it wise to let Chidovir go by himself into this place? I mean, well, or is he allowed to bring somebody? Well, he uh, said. Oh, are you are you asking the Nolianak or the? I'm Cultus? asking the Nolianak if he's allowed to bring okay. someone with him. It says, 
this is a trust thing, I'm assuming. I mean, if you want us to trust you, you have to trust us. Friendship is a two-way road. You Can't may come you in. A giant lizard. Okay. I will eat your face. Cool. <laughs> okay. So everybody kind of steps inside of the the uh, through the barn doors. Okay. And you're and I'll see if inside I can, of the inside of the warehouse. I'll see if I can crack the window from the outside so I can hear what's going on. Okay. Okay. So without being so, seen. So what is inside the barn? What do we see when we go in? Uh, Rob, are you able to load that one? Yeah, just a second. There's something. I gotta fix something. Oh, okay. So he let us all go in there. But I'll I'll describe it for you. Basically, yeah, it's kind of an old, dilapidated wooden uh, barn-style warehouse. Um, Brant would kind of recognize it's similar to the one in front of the borough building. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. So it looks like it could fall over. So there's, but there's no like place that's kind of separated that I could wiggle into the rafters. Um, make an investigation check. It's uh, up. I really should. I think I need a multi glass to rogue. It's cool. Nineteen. The map. Night. Wow. Okay. Yeah, you do find some places under the eaves where the um, soffits have fallen off, and okay. you can kind of uh, squeeze in. I will stealthily squeeze in. Okay. Make a stealth check. And and which side of the which side of the um, of the barn are you in? All right, an eighteen still. The okay. map's up, Brian. Yeah. Yeah, I see. I, I'm going to start sharing it. Ooh, that's freaky. All I've got is black on the map. Not all. There we go. Now I can see. Okay. When I move my character, the uh, the black pillars move around with it. That's yeah, it's because that's the the black pillars are are the darkness that you can't see. Uh, I see. Ooh, trippy. Okay, so yeah, you um. So Jonathan, you see cultists inside. Uh, it looks like one of them is kind of hiding behind the barrel there. Or wait, you came at the other side. The from the. North? I was trying to come from the bottom. It's not. I think I'm. Drag myself into walls here. Stand by. Oh, okay. Oh, no, I can see. You're in the. Wall. You're, in the you're inside. I can see Jonathan. I can see Jonathan. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about like in the middle, kind of on this side. Okay. Oh, wow. Now, when I move my character, I can see the cultists hiding behind some stuff too. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. and um. Sorry. Oh, did I just move my character? Can I move him? Yeah. Back? Oh, wait, is that who is that? Yeah, yeah, that's true. So hold on, yeah, you can't go that far yet. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, so as you walk in, the Nullianak says, follow me. He says, um, the office door on the, uh, on the left, that's where Chur, Chur is. And he, he hands you some rolled up papers and a pen. And he says, these are the papers to sign. What are these, NDAs? He hands them to Chur. And he says, not NDAs. <laughs> Okay, so I guess I'm gonna see my brother. So I walk yeah. into the, I walk into the barn. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm ahead of the Nullianak. Yeah, and um, I'll put the, I'll put that in the chat here. Okay. Can I get to the chat? Let's see here. And and so I can only walk five squares for each turn, right? Well, we're not. You're not in combat now, unless you oh. decide that you are. Okay. So you said the office door on the left. Yeah. So as you, we'll we'll kind of move you. He'll he'll lead the way here. Okay. All right. Okay. So oh, he I see some chains. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's a desk, and the the when you when he opens the door, you can see Drovo is is uh, blinded by the the light coming through the doorway. Mm-hmm. And he's yeah he's his leg is chained uh chained to the desk. Drovo, I'm here, my brother. It'll be fine. He says, "Sure." Yes, it's me. I'm here with some friends. Uh, 
they have some requests. What, what's your request? Well, I turn to the Nullianac and I say, so, so what, what are the conditions that you want and what are your reasons for those conditions? You, you must ask him to sign this paper and um, let's see, I'll see if I can find, I'm trying to find the, now that I'm sharing, it's hard to find the chat on here. I got I'm a feeling like this the, is a setup. Paste the, the note into the chat oh, or the thing to sign. Yeah. Hmm. I I look around me and I see that there's some cultists like hidden behind some pillars. So I'm getting I'll the just, feeling that this is a trap. Jose, I'm going to post it into your uh, Facebook. Okay. Instead. Oh, is that the message? Yeah, your Facebook messenger. Okay. I drove Odovir do hereby. Are you reading it out loud? Well, no, I'm going to walk into the okay. room and I'm going to give this to Drovo. And I say, here, they want you to sign this so they can let you go. You must ask him to sign it. Can you sign these papers for me, brother? He says, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll sign anything. Just let me out of here. Okay. So I hand up the papers. And okay, I and, he, uh, and and you hand him the pen. Yes, I hand him the pen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he uh, he signs the paper. And uh, and the and the uh, Nullianac hands you the a key. This okay. will unlock him. Okay. So I go to his lock, to his chain, and I unlock his leg, and I said, "Okay, we did what you wanted. You will keep your word." Drovo uh, stands up and stretches his arms and legs out a little bit. And he says, brother, uh, may I borrow your scarf? And he, he points at the uh, silken sword. Uh-oh. <laughs> God. Uh, here we go again. Um, I, I We exchange a look. And I'm like, my look is like, don't do it dude don't do it let's just get out of here that uh i say well i'll take care of you when we're in the where we're in the truck how's that he looks at you and he looks at the nully and says very well and he charges at the nully and oh my god uh so everybody roll for initiative uh, which, which one the 20 okay roll for initiative <laughs> Oh god damn it. Oh, Amen. Shit. I got a two. So glad I signed on for this. <laughs> <laughs> so who got a two? It, you add your initiative bonus to it also. Okay, initiative, initiative, initiative. It's up at the top uh next to armor class, I think. Three. Wow. Yeah, Is I got it? a five total. Okay. Initiative plus two, so I got four. Wow. That's really bad. 10. Okay. Yeah. So I got a 23. Oh. Jared okay. got a four. And yeah. I got a I got, so we got a 10. Dang it. Did you add your initiative? Yeah. Okay, what did Ralph get? You said 15? 13. 13, okay. Oops. Freaking Dorvo. That's my brother. <laughs> what did Jonathan <laughs> get? Classic Dorvo. Right? Kind of regret, you know, jumping in the truck now. <laughs> What did Jonathan get? 23. OK. I think you should come down here, Jonathan, and come crack some skulls. I'm going to roll for Drovo. <laughs> that's, that's a little more. Can you poop acid the on these guys? Me to do. That's it's what I was thinking. Yeah. You should poop acid on these guys. Somebody get that bird some Taco Bell. Somebody give me a diamond. The nearest Taco Bell that sells diamonds is uh, like five towns over. <laughs> Oh, they're not diamonds. <laughs> Should have just grabbed that earring. Okay. That's fine. We'll be we'll be okay. I guess this is meta meta gaming, but so you need a diamond to poop acid or something? I need a diamond as a spell component. Okay. To yeah, do my damage dealing spell, which can be acid. 
Gotcha. I'll act like okay, I don't know. Okay, so Drovo that. is going to punch the Nolianak. Okay, seems out of character, but fine. Uh, he's got he's got a strange look on his face. The Nolianak. Okay, so this is uh, twenty five to hit, so that hits. So that's um. So seven wait, is, damage. is Drovo punching him, or am I punching him all of a Drovo's sudden? Drovo's punching the Nolianak. Okay. Gotcha. He's really mad. Yep, and then he's going to do Flurry of Blows, which is a monk ability, so he can punch him two more times. Oh, that's terrible. He missed the other two. Okay. Um, and that uh, that kind of caught the uh, Nolianak off guard. Um, but now, but now he's looking up at Drovo and he says, "What is the meaning of this?" And he draws his swords. And uh, Jonathan, you're up. Um, and so, are these the little piles on the floor? Are debris? Yes, and there are, are wooden there... crates around. I swear to okay. God, if you're going to look at the debris for food, I'm going to pluck you. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I have a Fair question enough. too. Fair enough. So there's yeah. the alone the Nolianak and then three cultists. Um, there's more oh. than that. Yeah, there are you can see five. Oh. I can like or six. Three. You can see six cultists. I see three cultists. Yeah, it, 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 the shadows move uh, oh, okay. around the pillars, and uh, oh, depending on some of them person. are hiding. I yeah, can see yeah. all of them. I can see all six right now. Yeah, it's right. She's standing yeah. in the back. Yeah. Uh, okay. So well, and because... you you guys can move forward because you did come inside, so you could move up to around where that uh, first box is. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Like okay. Yeah, Ralph, allowed... so we can move it. Oh, yeah. I see what's going on now. Yeah. Okay, cool. And Dynamic the lighting. Shadows. That's there awesome. Dynamic lighting. Mm -hmm. So I am going to use minor illusion because it does not have any verbal components. So I should be able to do it quietly from up in the rafters. And here where I'm pinging, I'm going to make the illusion of like a large poisonous snake, not like crazy large, but like a Good sized poisonous snake slithering out of the barrel and like down toward this guy. Okay. <laughs> that that guy goes, ah! just so now they know where he is. And I'm okay. And then I guess I'll use no, I guess that's it. And I'm done. I'm okay. just gonna slink it in the shadows and the rafters. Hey, good. That was a that was a quick snake. <laughs> just, just snaking my wind way into the top of the initiative order. Okay, okay, and how's this gonna go? Which which turn? Whose turn is next? Yeah, uh, next is the Nullianax turn. So he is he uh, draws his swords and he says, "Drovo, we don't want to do this again." And he attacks him. Is Drovo? Uh, how how much damage does Drovo take? Uh, I'm. I gotta roll it. Okay, so two swords. Yeah. While you're doing that, I'm gonna start planning my attacks, which is a good thing to have planned. Twenty and a seventeen. And Drovo's armor class is seventeen, so they both hit. Okay. 18. Oh my God. Okay. Drovo's unconscious. Uh, he doesn't learn. Is he your little brother? Yeah. I think he's my older brother, right, Brian? I think he's older. Yeah, he's an older brother. Uh, okay. So Drovo's unconscious again. Yeah. Okay, um, and yeah, next is uh, was next was Drovo's turn, um, so he's going to make a death save. 
Okay. And after that is Opist A, which I have no idea which ones are which. So the uh, the one next to the snake uh, screams and swings at it with his sword. Um, so Brant, does that that doesn't make it disappear? Just the sword goes through it, right? I think Brant disappeared. So is the guy with the snake the guy who's uh, to the left of the Nullianac on the door to Drovo's cell? Uh, no, the guy the the guy with the snake is down in the lower left corner. Oh, okay, I can't see him from here in my map. Is did Brent drop out of the connection? No, he's, he's not at the. Uh, he he maybe had to go to the bathroom or something. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm just you know, planning my attack here. Okay, so Brent, he swung this uh, cultist swung at your snake. Does that does the sword just go through it and it stays there? Yes. Okay. Is there some kind of a, there's no kind of a check or anything to to figure out that it's an illusion? Uh, intelligence investigation check against my spell save DC, which is 13, if it okay. interacts it with it. Okay. Well, no, that's if it uses the action. If, I think if the sword passes through it, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. Or unless, I don't know, maybe you thought he missed. But it says, the creature uses its action to examine the sound or image. The creature can determine that it is an illusion with a successful intelligence investigation check. Okay, so yeah, he, he he figures out that it's an illusion and he says, the snake's not real. <laughs> okay, and uh... Captain Obvious Cultist. <laughs> <laughs> you must be the brains of the operation. Um, so R Rob, I, I am also seeing the, uh, I guess that would work. Um, I need to move one of the righteous out. But I can't click on them. So the, the, the one that's on the top is going to move. Let's see, how far can he move? Will the cultists call themselves the righteous? Nope. He's going to move 10 feet. Oh, no, that's not a righteous. That's uh, something else. Okay. Oh, hey, I see a weird green dude coming in. Who's that dude? So the, the righteous are the, the wormy ones. With a white shirt? No, <coughs> that was not the, not the one. Ah, oh, crap. This is going to be one of those battles. We're kind of outnumbered, aren't we? Yeah, we're definitely outnumbered. Damn. Okay, yeah, I see. Um, I don't think, Rob, I don't think I can move him. I feel like I should be humming some combat music. Oh, well, yeah, we can put on some combat music. I rolled, I rolled under the bed. Hang on. Okay, he's fixed. Okay. Is that sound coming through? Yes. Okay. All right, so... 10 feet towards uh, Jerd over here. Okay, is it my turn? Uh, What's going on? Yet. Okay. Okay, so this all this is, um, moves here 
and he he looks at the Nellianek and he says, "What do I do? Do I attack?" Okay, and the other righteous comes out. I remember that dude from my dream. Yeah. Ah, oh, jeez. This this guy was hard. So he kind of floats over the box and he comes over to here. Wow. So and who asked if they should attack? Was it one of the cultists? Yeah. I and hear sirens in the music. Moves up to here. Yeah, I did. I didn't realize that we had uh, sirens. The Zordorex police is coming. <laughs> bad boys, bad boys. Gosh. They're all surrounding Shota Beer. Oh man. Jesus. Well, since I leveled up, I got some good spells and I got a spell that I can put on my sword. And Drobo's passed out. Yeah. I guess it's a good idea we came along. <laughs> I'm beginning to question that. I feel like if we had attacked the Nolianac. We would have just killed the Nelly Mac, and then we wouldn't have anything to go on. Unless they sent Mr. 27. Yeah, but we wouldn't have been able to get to Drovo. Because yeah. the cultists are jerks. Jerks. And the jerks. Boston Bowl didn't help. I'm going to grab a soda. I'll be right back. Okay, and then Ralph is next. Ralph? Yes. You're next. Oh, uh, this dice? Well, what are you going to do? You're going to decide what you're going to do. Yeah, let me go to my D&D &D thing. Here we go. All right, so uh, I can only move five spaces. Six, yeah. right? 30. 30. Sorry, was it six spaces for 30? Yeah, each one is five. Okay, so six spaces. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, one, six. All right, so I'm gonna go up full six spaces. Six. And, uh. Back. All right, brother. Okay, is it my turn? No, I'm about, uh, no. I, I wanna, I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, agonizing blasts. Get him out of this, get Shodavir out of this position. Okay. <clears throat> Dog's gonna, excited. And I'm gonna so blast So it's it. just your, it's your Eldritch Blast and it'll just do more damage now. Yes. So which one are you shooting at? I'm shooting at the guy dead ahead of me. Okay. It's okay. He's All right, roll die. to hit. So you roll 20 sided die. And add your spell attack bonus that's on the spell there. So it'll say plus something to hit there. Spell attack bonus is which one? I'm trying to find it. So you, you go to the spell. Um, let's see. Bear with me. Where is it? Insight, stealth, survival. Where exactly is my spell? Strength, intelligence. Well, I, I I threw a twelve. I'm just trying to find what I add to it. Yeah, I'm trying. Oh, to, uh, I'm spell attack. If you go to your spells, there's a modifier spell attack save DC. Yeah. You have to show me. So you're doing Eldritch Blast. So you've got it's plus four to hit. Oh. Uh, oh, there. Oh, okay. Spell attack. So you plus rolled one. a twelve, so that's plus four is sixteen, right? Right. And I did. Okay, uh, so actually, that, I did. A, I did agonizing blast. Agonizing blast. Okay. So um, that is hold this to B, and how much damage? You see, so you got to roll the damage. It says uh, roll a ten-sided die and add two to it. 
a 10 sided die and add a two to it. Is this my 10? Yes, this is my 10. So a total would be nine. Wow. Okay. And that uh, takes him out. Oh, good going, Ralph. You're welcome. Yeah. You owe me a soda. <laughs> well, I got a Heineken Zero, so. I'll take it. <laughs> There's no alcohol in this. Ah. Now, what's the point? <laughs> it was, okay, it was so, already taken. Um, after Ralph, then, Rob, you can bring out those guys with the white shirts again. You hear a, a whistling sound. Whistling sound? Yeah. What was that? And uh, this guy. Oh, I can't see him. He's behind a pillar. Heads towards Ralph. Oh, damn. He's kind of a dead-eyed looking uh, human. He's wearing kind of raggy clothes. And he's heading towards you with his hands out. He doesn't, he's not holding any weapons. Mm. I'm prepared. Oh, and the funny. other one will all will do the same. I can't see the other one. Is he like oh, a, a, a thrall? Can, can you see him from where you are? Yeah, you probably can. Yeah. Uh, make a, m m what's your passive perception? It's on the left side of your character sheet. Left side so, of my character sheet. All of a sudden I can see the whole warehouse. Is that supposed to be happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Um, yeah, I turned it off to make it easier. Out, so. Okay. My passive perception, per, uh, 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 perception is at a 15. So, uh, Jose, what's your passive perception? Because you were asking about that those guys. So, uh, my I'm trying passive to see if you perception them or not. is that the perception plus four that I have here? No, it's it says passive oh, perception. Down I have the a left fourteen. Side of the character sheet. Fourteen. fourteen. Uh, four, yeah, fourteen. Passive okay, perception. so you do notice them, and uh, you remember these these creatures to the the uh, the whistling. Uh, they seem like they're voiders. Oh shoot. They're really, really nasty. Um, yeah. I scream out, Voiders! <laughs> <laughs> and, Although and I'm nobody sure... Nobody else knows what that means. <laughs> uh, I guess okay. I'm the only one here from the Imagica, along with my brother and Benoli and I, yeah. and the cultists. Well, okay. yeah. All right. Um, well, I'm in the middle of a fight, so I can't really explain to everybody. Yeah, and, and the Nolian Act is just kind of yelling, Stop! Stop! Everyone stop fighting! And uh, now it's Zoe's turn. All righty. The Nolly well, set stop? Yeah. Okay. All right. So since this dude is coming up on my partner here, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to cross my fingers. Okay. And I am going to cast, uh, where is it? All right, where is it? Where did I see it? Dang it, where is it? There it is, Guiding Bolt. Oh, okay. Against the Voider? Yeah. Well, I rolled a 20 for to see whether yeah. or not it works, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that what I did? You, you rolled a natural 20? or No, 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 a... I'm asking. I rolled a 20 or I rolled, rolled a 6 because I see 46 on hero damage. Oh, yeah, you have to roll the hit first, so that's the 20. Okay, the hit time. first, so cross my fingers. Ah, eight! Eight plus, what's your uh, spell attack bonus on Guiding Bolt? Spell attack bonus? So it'll say plus something, you know, before the uh, damage. I don't see a plus anything on here. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, plus five. Okay, so you got an eight plus five. That's yeah. 13. So uh -huh. that hits. Okay. Yeah. And then roll for the damage on the six sided. Yeah, it's. I think it's not four, four six sided dice. It says 4d6. Yeah. So roll. So you, so, yeah, you roll, roll four six sided dice. Or you can roll one four times. If you want. Okay. First one so is. You add it all together. First one is one. Okay. 
Second one is three. Third one is five. Last one is four. Okay, what's the total? One, three, four, five, so seven, eight, thirteen. Okay. He takes a, a he takes a hit, and that voider is glowing now. So the next person that attacks him has advantage. Nice. Uh, and he's he he took a pretty bad hit. It, Don't it, you mess it, he, him a uh, little bit. He kind of shakes it off, but it looks like it it hurt him pretty badly. Okay, Musette's turn. Ah. And then Chertovir will be next. Okay, cool. So I'm going to do what I intended to, even though you said that I should uh, hit that other guy. Uh, so let's see. Wait, oh, I got to move my person. Wait, because we can move diagonally, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that, One, that's... Mm -hmm. two, three, four, five, six. And then I want to go ahead and... Okay, oh, real quick question. Can, if I um, do healing word towards Drovo, is that okay? Yeah. Because there's people yeah. in the way? No, that's that, that'll that work. Okay, because I'm, I'm barely within the 60 feet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 45. Yeah, 45. Yeah, and okay. you have a, you have pretty good sense of what's going on i mean he's he's in you you've got a little bit of a line of sight on him so you can see that he uh collapsed yeah but we we need that extra body so i'm gonna do healing word okay 18 do i add anything to that um yeah sorry i got distracted <laughs> I don't know who that is behind Brandt. <laughs> I got company. Okay, so do I hit cast on here? Uh, yes. Okay, and then you roll how much healing you do. Uh, yeah, I got an 18. Okay. Um, oh, well, the, the healing is not, it's not, I think 18 would be high. You don't have to you don't have to attack him or anything with it. It's just it just works. Oh, okay. So you just roll how much healing you do. And how do I roll that? It, oh, is it the one D four plus two? Yeah, so the pyramid shaped one. One D four, is there a bonus to that or is it just one D four? It says one D four plus two heart. Okay. So I got a two. Plus two. So I guess four. Okay, so he gets four hit points back. Um, so he uh, he wakes up and shakes his head, and uh, and um, he's back up again. I yell at him, stay down and shut up. <laughs> okay. Listen to your brother. Yeah. Uh, and now it's uh, Jonathan's turn. Or no, I'm right, sorry, it's Jordan gonna... Beer's turn. Then Jonathan. Oh. All right. right, since I am within five feet of the Nolianak, I'm looking right at him. I'm going to... He's still... Is he still yelling, stop, stop? Yeah, yeah, he is. Uh, so here's my here's my dilemma. We're already, like... We already killed one of the cultists. Um, they already slashed at my brother. They brought in Voiders and Righteous... I don't think this is a battle we can win, honestly. Uh -huh. um, okay, so I'll, I'll bite. I will. I will. I will also say, okay, everybody, stop. Okay, what do you want, Nullianak? What do you want, Number Twenty Eight? Can we just grab my brother and go? He he looks around and and he says, "Yes, get him out of here." Oh, that worked. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, I look around at you guys and kind of do a thumbs up and say, okay, uh, I'm grabbing my brother. We're backing out. We're taking the truck, though. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Drovo kind of gets up and he, he looks around. I guess we're out of combat at this point. 
Drobo oh, looks gosh. around and sees all this uh, carnage around him, and he he, he he kind of shakes his head and he says, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, do, I don't know what came over me. I don't know why I did that. You're, you're, we can't hear you, Jose. So I say, can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I say, sorry, the cat was in the way. Uh, so I say, okay, uh, just come with me, Drovo. Just don't say anything. We'll get you out of here. It's fine. Okay. So he, uh, he, he says, thank you, brother. He says, wait, wait. Did I sign something? Yes. But is the yeah. paper still out? Like, does he still have it in his hand? Uh, uh, it's on the table. Okay. Um, can I use prestidigitation to start it on fire? Uh, or I'm well, going to. Not for, you don't know. I mean, you, you you can't see it from where you're at. Oh, this table in the room. Yeah, it's the table way up oh, in the upper right corner there. I am. Okay, are, are you moving closer? Yeah, I'll just kind of try to stealthily hop along the, or, you know, do a little seagull waddle along the rafters okay. till I get over. I'm not moving there. He, he says, uh, hold on. What did I sign? Um... I mean, so I whispered to him, don't worry about that. It's, it's, you, it's worthless. I mean, you know, let's just get you out of here while we still have the chance. This is not a battle we can win. Uh, make a persuasion under, check. Okay. It's signed under duress. I mean, uh, persuasion check. Roll 20. I got a five. Let's see, persuasion minus one. God damn it. So I got a four. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Provo, no. <laughs> he says, It's hopeless, man. Yeah. I feel like I've been tricked. Um, I don't want to tell him what he signed. Um, oh, no. But uh, again, I just try to I just try to tell him, you know, it's it's okay, it's fine. Let's just go. Uh, don't worry about it. it. It's it's worthless. Let's just go. Yeah, can I use mage hand to just start lifting the paper up, like toward okay. the ceiling? Can it, is the ceiling high enough that if it goes up to the ceiling, the Nolanek will not be able to reach it? Um. That's a good question because it's a barn. Yeah, the, yeah. The ceiling is high. The ceiling's like a good uh, twenty feet up. Hmm. Okay, so okay. you're you're doing that. Yeah, I'm going to move the papers thirty feet, or you know, up to thirty feet straight up into the rafters. Okay. Um, yeah, where the Nullianax standing, he wouldn't see that. But make a make a sleight of hand check. That I can do. Sleight of beak. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I did not roll very well. Eight. Okay. And he is going to do perception to see if he notices that. Rent for the win. Yeah. He says, that bird is here. It's doing something. It's casting a spell. <laughs> Um, well, I, and so I, and then, yeah, just stop seconds, him 30 feet. Uh, it goes 30 feet up in six seconds and then 30 feet toward me. The next, what would be the round? So, up I guess I'm just air. gonna try to meet it halfway and snatch it out of the air and just fly out of the barn. Okay, so we're going back into combat, <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, the it's the Nolian X turn at this point. Um, okay. And where where are you? So you're up in the air? Yeah, I'm still, I'm like standing in the rafters from where I okay. snuck in. 
Okay, so are we going back to our previous uh, order? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do you have so the, the paper in the your beak? Next turn. And it does is, Brent have the paper in his beak or something? No, I think it started when it lifted. So I think it's thirty feet up in the air. Yeah. I think it's currently just straight up, right in the air. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so you're 30 feet up in the air, or you're 20 feet up in the air? In I'm however high the rafters are, yeah. I'm sitting on a cross beam. Okay, so he can, he does, um, uh, there, you see a, a ball of light shoot out of his the fingers from his head mm -hmm. towards you. So I'm going to do a dodge as a reaction. Okay. Yeah, so that, that's that uh, 11 to hit. That misses. Okay, so it, it uh, smashes into the rafters up above you. Uh, and next is Drovo's turn. Or, I'm sorry, not Drovo. Yeah, it is Drovo's turn. Okay. Uh, Drovo says, what's happening, brother? <laughs> I don't understand. Uh, so what you signed was... Uh that you would renounce and withdraw from the Zordrexian Council and that you would renounce all politics except worshipping Apex Amendios. He says, but, I would rather die. Okay, I get that. But hear me <laughs> out. <laughs> it that apparent. It's, you know, it's useless because okay. as soon we, as we you get really you... only have six seconds in a turn. Okay. And that was, that was kind of his That turn. was it. Okay, he'd rather yeah. die. Okay, fine. Okay. Uh, the one of the cultists hearing that he's supposed to go after the bird runs over this way and uh, do I have cover because I'm kind of up in the rafter um not unless you well yeah not right now I would say you could probably hide, uh, you know, you can do the hide. Um, that's, you're not a, you're not a rogue. I guess you can't do a hide bonus action. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. I, so no, I can claim he's going to, th he's going to throw his scimitar at you because he doesn't know what else to do. <laughs> that's smart. Losing his weapon. Okay. So he, he got an eight. Turn, right? What's that? I can only do one reaction yeah. between my turns. But he got an eight, so I think he's going to miss you anyway, right? He is. So he throws his sword at you, and it, it uh, kind of flings in the air and, and uh, clatters onto the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad it didn't hit him in his own head. <laughs> yeah, and this um, creature, the righteous, moves towards you um, five feet, and then it goes five feet up towards you. Uh-oh, this could it's kind of going diagonal towards you. Yeah, and but it can't reach you yet. Okay. And that guy is dead. And the other that righteous is air the support. Same, doing the same thing. This is pretty different. Most of the time they're not uh they're not all focused on on uh Jonathan. <laughs> Okay, uh, this cultist runs up here behind. Can he stand there? Yeah, he, he goes behind the Nullianak and throws his sword. <laughs> oh, he, sorry. He, he also missed. He got an eight. I'm sorry. Yeah, these guys. <laughs> this one runs up here and throws his sword. Oh my God. <laughs> They're dumb as bricks. Oh, he got a natural one. So he did a terrible job. Uh, <laughs> Actually, I have a chart for that. I should go to the chart. We should just convince one of these guys to jump off a cliff and see what happens. This guy does hit yeah. himself in the head. <laughs> guys are stupid. Heads are stupid. The stupid as rock heads. <laughs> okay. I think hands are stupid. I don't need hands. Okay, so, um, so Brant, can you roll a percentile? Yes. Is that the ten-sided die? Yeah, it's two ten-sided dice. Mm. Forty-three. Okay, so 
okay um he so he uh he dropped to last in the initiative order i don't think i can edit initiative on here can you roll it again i don't want to do that one <laughs> i got a 43 again what are the chances okay, one of more time 60 69 nice okay so he um <laughs> Oh wow! All of his allies have disadvantage on the next attack. <laughs> so the sword bounced down and like knocked around on there. Yeah, head. it distracted everybody. Is is one of the People voiders still dodge glowing? out of the way and stuff? What's that? Was one of the voiders still glowing? Uh, yes. Well, yeah. The next attack on him will uh, has advantage. So yeah. Okay. Okay, so this guy also runs up at here and throws his sword at Jonathan. <laughs> you think they didn't learn. But he has disadvantage. <laughs> so he, he, he almost made it, but he didn't. And uh, the it's like one we could all just walk out of here. Snake, while they, they do he runs right through the snake. <laughs> he throws his sword. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh. That would have been a critical hit, but he has disadvantage. <laughs> they, he missed. Okay. And there's a lot of these cultists. Well, I mean, they're in a cult. They're not. Yeah. So I single handedly with. disarmed all the cultists. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're okay. Welcome. It was uh, like is, was no effort. <laughs> next is Ralph's turn. Uh, I don't know. Right. Let's mess with this. 20 sided dice. Who, who's this main guy? I, I forgot his name. The one with the funky name that's not a number. Oh, the. Uh, uh, the Nolianek? No, no, yeah, his name I'm, is a number. But oh, yeah, he's Nolianek. a Nolianek. Oh, okay, he's I'm Mr. sorry. 28. Yeah. I, I'm going to uh, cause fear on him just to see what happens. Okay. Um, well, there's a saving throw for that, right? It's a, it should say wisdom uh, DC something. On a spell. Okay. Okay. Is that on my character sheet? Yes. On the spell, it'll say wisdom save DC something. Right. Wisdom 12. And okay. I can Thank launch you. Launch that at 60 feet. Okay. Okay. Um, so this guy then I can he, get he, it didn't work. Uh, he 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 feels it, but he shakes it off. Oh, I don't have to roll for that. No, I he rolls. He, he's rolling. He rolled a saving throw and he made it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, and the voider that took the hit. Let's see here. <laughs> huh. See, this is why I don't vote. Cultists lobbing about scimitars is no basis for a form of government. Yeah. <laughs> so he he um he he holds out his hand in front of him and uh and picks up something really tiny from from his hand and chucks it at you. And I guess he has disadvantage. <laughs> Yeah. So that's a ten. Uh, that was a ten to hit, so that probably misses, right? It does. Okay, so you see a little tiny mite, like a bug, fly through the air past you. Delicious. And the the other one does the same thing. Oh man, a natural twenty and a two. So he throw Ooh, he yes. uh, he throws a little bug at you too, and it it also misses. Um, next up is Zoe. Okay, I am just gonna do something very simple. I am going to move right here. Okay. Use my automatic weapon. <laughs> okay. 
Who, who are you shooting at? I mean, it's really hard to miss at that range. Oh, the, that that guy in front of you? Exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, roll, roll the hit. He is... Uh, Come on, Danny Bumpin needs a bump and he's new pair of shoes. Ah, oh, three! Three plus... Yeah, it's probably not enough, but... No. Damn it. It is hard to miss at that range, but... but it not is. impossible. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. And he's not the one that you have advantage on. Uh-uh. Okay, yeah. He's so blocking he, the one um, that I blew up, basically. He sees you pull out the weapon, and he dives down on the floor while you start firing. Um, Gosh darn it. Let's see here. There are There is a big lineup of guys behind there. So I guess roll, roll with disadvantage to hit the next guy. And that's the... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's another advantage. cultist. Yeah. Another, that means you roll two you roll two 20-sided dice and pick the lower number. But pick isn't the that the one that she hit with Guiding Bolt already? So it should cancel no, out? No, it's not. She hit Avoider with Guiding oh, okay. Bolt. We've got a 10 okay. and a 13. Okay, so a 10 uh, plus what, what's, your, uh, what's your bonus to hit? And where is that? On the you look on the actions on your weapon. On the actions on my weapon, and that is hit DC is plus four. Okay. And so then you got damage a and then damage is two D six plus two. Okay, so you hit that guy, even though you Woo! weren't aiming at him. Uh, so roll uh, roll the damage. And that's the six sided. Okay. Twice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Four. One. Okay. Wait. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's um. Five plus. Is there two, a seven. bonus to that? It's two d six plus something. Yeah. So it'd be seven total. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So he got shot pr uh, pretty bad. He's like, ah, jeez. <laughs> okay. And um, that's Zoe's turn, and now it's Musette's turn. Okay. <clears throat> I am going to scooch myself up here, uh, turn here, and then I want to cast a, whoa, where'd it go? A uh, wind wall. Okay. Like, kind of along here. Uh, shoot, you guys you can't see my... Um, is it a, is it a vertical, or is it going like from north to south across those, or where are you putting it? Uh, yeah, I want to mostly be able to cover up the person that Zoe missed. Yeah. And then if we could just make it a little bit more, uh, slanted. Okay. Yeah. So it'll cover up the wormy guys and then the zombie dudes and like two or three cultists. But not Chertevir and the Anolia Nack. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. So, Rob, do, do, can you are you able to put something up for that? I mean, I, I'm trying to think of where that. Sorry, I know that that's like a. <clears throat> no, no, it's good. That's a good idea. Yes, okay. that's like perfect. That? If you can make it slightly longer, though, and also cover up the person that's right next to Zoe, and that would be okay. everybody. So it's 50 feet long and 15 feet high. Right. So I'm not completely helping Jonathan, but at least we can. So that can go, um, that can, that's only half of its length. It could go longer. I don't know how, you know. Yeah, I do want it to go longer. Yep. Okay. Like that? That's perfect. Thanks, Rob. Yay. All right. And um, do I need to do anything on my sheet? Um, I have to. I don't think hit so. Cast? I think you just put it up, and everybody else has to do saving throws and stuff. Or wait. Okay. Oh wait. When Hold the on. I was appears, clicking the right Each side. creature within its area must make a strength saving throw, and and they take three d eight bludgeoning damage. So I guess you roll the damage. Okay. And so, and it's what's um, the well, it's only one foot thick, so it's only going to hurt one, no, two, three eight. of these guys. This is an eight. Okay. Okay. So, cultist A. 
So has to make eight. a strength saving throw. And that's the eight? Yeah, eight, and you roll that three times. Okay. Five, eight, 13, and another eight is 21. Wow. Okay. Oh, and he, he, uh, he rolled high, so he, he, he passed that. So let's see here. Or half as much on it. Oh, he still takes damage. He just takes half, and he doesn't fall over, I think. Okay, so um, what was the total damage? I hit a 21. 21 damage. Wow. Okay. He is dead. Oh, 21 divided by two. He's still dead. Okay. <laughs> and then the next one would be okay. the uh, the voider. Who okay. You, who, um, what about his advantage on the, on the hit? So I guess I'll give him disadvantage for the saving throw. Okay. And then I do a three again. Okay. Six plus three. No, it's nine. the same damage. You don't have to oh. roll it again. Oh, okay. He, so it's... Um, Okay, so he got 12 plus one, so he got 13. What did he need to get? Was it 13? What's the saving throw DC on that? Was it 12? 12, okay, so he passed. So he take, but he's still dead because he took. 11 damage so so that voider is gone yep that one that rob just crossed out and then there's one more cultist because i haven't hit anybody and i haven't been hit by anybody wow musette is kicking butt okay so that guy what letter is he there are so many cultists. Wow. He hasn't. Okay. Yet. Well, he'll be C. Okay. He has to make a strength saving throw. Oh, he he uh, he passed, so he takes ten, but he's still dead. Jesus, Musette, you're a Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and there's a wind wall there that's kind of blocking the enemies off. Hey Ryan, what about this guy? Uh. Oh, it is kind of going into his square a little bit. Okay. He will be cultist D. He passed, so he takes... He was the one that was really hurt. What's that? He was the one that was really hurt. Oh, yeah, okay. so we well, injured now he's, him. Now he's really dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That was a pretty big turn for Musette. And now it's Chertovir's turn. Okay. Is this the turn that I'm actually going to combat anybody? Let's see. Um, yeah, why not? There's a cultist right behind, in front of me. And there's a wind wall uh, directly to the south of you. So if you walk into that, you're going to get hurt. There's what? I'm sorry? A wind wall. Uh, okay. that, oh, that I see it. Musette okay. made. And so if you step gotcha. into that, you're going to get hurt. All right, I will not step into that. Instead, since I'm five feet away from this guy and he's got his back turned towards me, I'm going to use Booming Blade, which is a cantrip. Okay. And it says um, damage is casting time one action, range five feet, duration one round. It says you brandish the weapon used in the spell's casting and make a melee attack with it against one creature within five feet of you. On a hit, the target suffers the weapon's attack normal effects and then becomes sheathed in booming energy until the start of your next turn. If a target unwillingly moves five feet or more before then, the target takes 1d8 thunder damage and the spell ends. Okay, so, so yeah, roll to hit. I'm going to use my weapon. silken sword. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm going to roll d20. Actually, yep. I'm going to do that on d20. I'm going to roll on d20. Oh, okay. It says 13. Okay, so you add your um, add your attack bonus with the silken sword. My attack bonus with the silken sword. Let's check that real quick. 
it says uh, damage 1d4 plus 3. Okay, so roll the pyramid-shaped four-sided die and add 3 to it. Okay. I got 3. Plus okay, so 6 damage six. to that guy. Okay. So 6 damage. I'm trying to think of which one that is. Gotcha. And then... Uh, it's the one right in front of me. Okay, well, he will be cultist E. Okay. And he's and, got this shroud around him that he'll take thunder damage if he moves. Okay, and that damage would be 1d4 plus 3, right? Okay. Uh, is that what it is? It says there a uh, damage for... Oh, no, wait, that's Erethamex Silken Sword. The yeah, booming... I think it was more, it was higher than the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The booming the blade sword damage. says um, on a hit, the target suffers the weapon's normal attack effects and then becomes sheathed in booming energy. If he moves, he takes 1d8. Okay. So he's he's got this uh, vibrating kind of energy around him mm -hmm. and he's looking at, he's looking really confused about it. Um, and so next up is Jonathan's turn. All right. Um, and the the uh, the the um, papers have flown over to you, and you can grab them in your beak if you want, or in your. Oh, that's exactly what I'm doing, and then I'm just going to beeline for the door. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm out. I'm I'm just flying away. I, I okay. don't see any reason to stick around. I got the papers. Like any good seagull, I'm going to steal what I need to steal and go. Okay. okay. Awesome. And you can go, what, 40, I think, or 35? 50. 50. What's, oh, oh, 50. Okay. So you're out the door. <laughs> yep. I'm going. Stop that seagull. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is that wacky racer? Racer, stop that pigeon yeah. now. Gotcha. <laughs> Was that before or after the wacky races with the cars? I think it was after, right? Yeah, that was the same. I think that was the wacky races with the cars. Okay, the Nolian Act. He does yell, stop that pigeon. I mean, stop that seagull. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess I need to move myself. Yeah. He, let's see. And you just know, to be sure. I'm as high as I can. These cultists don't have swords, right? They're clattered on the floor. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dumbasses. Uh, yeah. So he um, he kind of chases after you. After. Uh... So there's two cultists left, right? One that can't move, otherwise he gets thunder hit energy, and the other one. He runs up to here. He does not throw his swords. But he, <laughs> but he, he runs that far, and that's all he can do for his turn. Okay. And now it's uh, it's Drobo's turn. He comes up to this cultist here and punches him. Oh, you guys just run away. We don't need to punch <laughs> here. Okay, so I got to pull up Mr. Drobo. I'm going to have a serious talk with my brother. <laughs> <laughs> So that's 12. I think that hits. He's a politician, for God's sake. <laughs> yeah, that hits. Sure. Okay. So this is cultist D. And he does 1D4 plus, I think, 4. So he does 6 damage to cultist OE. So that guy is dead. Yeah. Okay. And... Um, There's still one voider and two righteous left, right? Yeah. So this righteous, it's losing, uh, it's losing the seagull, and it's got a wind wall in front of it. So he's going to go up ten feet, uh, ten more feet to get above the wind wall, and that's that's all he does for that turn. Which which righteous? The B one? Yeah, the B one. Or actually, like a well, it's a, actually. Um, the A one does that, sorry. Okay. Oh, that B is on a cultist. Okay, the righteous don't have an A and a B on them yet. Yeah, aren't but they the supposed one in to the be front. like on the on the ground? Well, they they started to they went up five feet and okay. now they're going up another ten feet to get over the wind wall. Okay. Because they, they can levitate. Gotcha. Um, smart. That 
And then the other righteous does the same thing. He moves up. Now he's 15 feet up. So on his next turn, he can come over the wind wall. And uh, cultist F. Whew. It's chilly down here. This guy. Uh, he is going to find one of the swords that's on the laying on the ground and grab <laughs> it, and that, that's what he does for his turn. He finds it over here in front of Mizet. Yeah. And cultist G. It seems like there are more dead cultists than it was that wind wall. Here. One, two, three, four, five. There were a total of eight. Um, oh, two of them are outside. That's why. Okay. I, I, I was zoomed in too much. I couldn't see them. Okay. So these guys, we're on a different turn now. So they are not attacking at disadvantage. But they heard that they were supposed to stop that uh, seagull. So th this one runs out here and throws his sword at Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> Where so do they get these uh, guys? You nobody shouldn't nobody throwing... gave them guns. They've got no way to, to attack him. Okay, so... Well, shouldn't try throwing jumping. a melee weapon give him disadvantage anyway? That's a, that's a 10. And then the other one does the same. And I guess I'm going to do a dodge when he attacks me. Okay. And that's a 14. That hits. Okay. Wow. And that was a disadvantage? No, it wasn't a disadvantage. Oh, because I dodged. Oh, it, oh, you impo oh, I see. You imposed a dodge. Okay. Here, I was thinking it, it, this it was still a battle. Because I just win. rolled higher on the other one. So. No. Okay. Yeah. So, good thing I rolled max hit points. So you you take uh, five damage. It uh, slices into you as it goes by. Okay. I'm gonna okay. give it a an indignant squawk. <laughs> Cue the so, sound effect. Okay. Um, there you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded very indignant, Rob. <laughs> um, now it's Ralph's turn. Ralph's turn. Surrounded by dead bodies, and you got your friends, uh, Musette and um, and Zoe next to you. Homeboys behind me. Yeah. 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 The seagull just flew past you up above, going out the door with a, a piece of paper uh, scrunched up in his beak. And everybody seems to be going after him. <laughs> Three, four, five. There. Now I'm going to look at this guy. Okay. I want to throw an uh, uh, agonizing blast at him. Okay. Yeah. So roll the hit with your Eldritch Blast. That's a, a roll to 15 plus. Ah, which one is it? Damn it! Uh, my which one do I add to it? Okay, it, let me pull that up here. It's plus I, four. See the hit DC after Eldritch Blast. Down here. There we go. So you add four to that. So you hit. Copy that. So and then the damage is one D ten plus D10. two, right? Yeah. Are you gonna roll the D10? Oh yeah, D10. Sorry, that one. No, no. no. Which one is it? It's the top. Here we go. I got a six. Okay, plus two, right? Plus two. Yes. One D10 plus two. So yeah. that's eight. He is barely uh, standing up, but he's uh, he took a bad bad hit. Oh, is that the, is that the Nullianac or the cultist? 
Nolianac. Nolianac. Oh, whoops. I, I thought it was the cultist. Okay. You get your six hit points back. Yeah. And the Nolianac. Okay. What was your um, hit again? I, it was high. I think it was high enough. Okay. So he took six damage. Eight damage. Oh, eight. Okay. Two more. Oops. Okay, got it. So he took that hit and he says, do not interfere. <laughs> Late for <Okay>. that, buddy. <laughs> okay, and then uh, the voider, he can go 30. So he's going to try to get around the wind wall. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. He's supposed to go after the bird, but his friend, the other voider, just got attacked by this wind wall. And I think the only person he sees in front of him is Zoe. So he's going to first attack you with his knife. Or, yeah. Let's see. So uh, 18 to hit. Oh, I'm looking at the yeah, that's that's the Nolianac. I'm sorry. He doesn't have a knife. This is a bite attack, and it's not 18, it's uh 13 to hit with biting. He bites at you. Does 13 hit? Okay. And then he's going to claw at you. Uh that's 15 to hit. Does that hit Zoe? 15 to hit. Yeah, what's your armor class? Armor class is 14. Okay, so that does hit. He hits you with a claw attack. Okay, so two. So you take uh, four damage. Okay. okay. And um, you uh, you feel something kind of crawl in under your skin. Ew! From the claw attack. Always got cooties. Yeah. You imagine it's one of those bugs that they were throwing at Jonathan. Okay. Uh, Zoe, it's your turn. You feel okay. this thing, it's it's worked, it's it's working its way under your skin and now it's starting to uh, get into your hand. Okay, sir, I've had just about enough of you. So <clears throat> I am going to do sacred flame. Okay. Okay, so let's do this. Come on. 12. Oh, and uh, plus. Uh, there's no plus on my screen here. Sacred she says, flame. Sacred Flame, there's no plus. I rolled a 12. And then for damage, I rolled a 1d8. All right, let me, I'm going to pull up Zoe. Oops. I don't see a plus at all. There should be. Oh, oh, maybe Sacred Flame has a saving throw. Does yeah, it's a saving that? throw. Yeah. Okay, so you don't roll anything to hit. Oh, okay. Um, so what is the, it says like that he has to make a, what, some kind of a save? Dexterity. That's okay. What's your, uh, what's this, the DC? The DC? Yeah, it, on the Sacred Flame description, uh -huh. it'll say, must make a dexterity save DC. Oh, something. dexterity 13. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's... Plus 
has to wait. Yeah. Yeah, he made it. Damn it. Um does it say he takes half damage on a on a failed save? Um the target gains no benefit from cover for this saving throw. Must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take 1d8 radiant damage. Okay, so he didn't get hurt. Damn it! All right, uh, Musette. Um, and Sir Devere will be next after Musette. Okay. Um, I had stepped out for a second. Oh, Did okay. Drovo pass out again? No, he's good. He's fine. Okay, just checking. Yeah, he just he went and beat uh, up the guy that was fighting uh, Chertovir. Okay, I want to uh, shoot, shoot, cult person F. Okay. Got it, right in front of you. Okay, roll yeah. the hit with your gun. You guys are going to be in trouble. Uh, 11? What, what, uh, and plus, okay. what's your bonus to hit for the gun? Uh, plus four? Yeah, so 15. Okay, so 15. So that hits. Okay, roll your damage. Okay, and that's uh, 2d6 plus two. Okay. So two plus two plus two, six total. Oh, wow. Okay, so he takes a, a big uh, big hit in his clavicle, um, but he's still um, he's still up. Wow, I suck. <laughs> well, you did take out a whole bunch of guys. Yeah. Nope. Failure. <laughs> All right. Well, now it's Chertovir's turn to shine. Okay. I can move my character one, two, three, three steps over here behind this guy. Yep. And he's, and, he's uh, hurt really bad. He's holding his shoulder. Yeah. So I think I'm just going to like, I'm just going to like slice him with my uh, Erethemex sword. Okay. Uh, roll and to hit. Roll to hit. So that's a 20. Seven. Plus. Plus, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. hang on. My Erethemex sword says, uh, oh wait, plus, um, what? What's that uh, that I need to, what's my modifier here? Um, you look in the actions on your sword and it'll say oh. plus, yeah. Okay, it says 1d4 plus three, that's damage. Um, yeah, it's before that. Okay, plus Attack five, these. so I got 12. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, 12 is exactly what you needed. So, and he had one hit point left, so you don't have to roll the damage. Okay, he's dead. so he's, he's dead. Yeah. I, I I let out my war cry shout. Oh! <laughs> it's the arithmetic thing. You wouldn't get it. <laughs> and it's Jonathan's turn now. Uh, you just got hit by a sword. You got these cultists looking up at you, but they're they don't have any weapons anymore. Do I recognize either of those cultists by the door as the one? Which one drove? Uh, that would be. Oh, there's two more. Okay. Yeah. That would be G. Okay. Um, I want to do, does he, do I see, does he have the keys like on a key ring or in his hand or something silly? Oh, Can you see the keys um, on the truck? You don't see them on him. Okay. I'm just going to full move fly, but I'll move up and kind of go on like, over the top of the building. So I'll basically just pull up and then fly the rest of, I'll take a dash action and just double move and start flying away over the top of the building back um, toward the way I came. So to okay. kind of get the building between me and everybody. Okay, so that's, um, you're going up. You're already pretty high. Well, you had to duck down to get through the door. Yeah. So you're so you're probably you're you're probably about eight feet up, and then so you to get up the rest of the way you probably have to go ten more feet up, and then then the rest of your movement you can go over. So it's like twenty. So I got thirty. Uh, 
and then I'll dash. So I should be able to get about whoop, there. Okay. And you're on the roof. But I'm or on, above yeah, the above the roof. Okay. And I'm All squawking right. madly uh, to try to alarm everybody that we should just get out of here. So I'm doing the the seagull, I just stole something noise. Yeah, okay. The the uh, Nolian axe turn. He sees Ralph in front of him and he says, get out of my way. And he, he uh, pulls out his swords and starts hacking at him. Tell him to eat it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so he's hacking. Because Ralph hit him with a, a an Eldritch Blast already. <laughs> okay, so how much damage does that do to me? So let's see. It's, oh wait, seven to hit. So one of them's twelve to hit. I think that misses, right? What's your armor class? Armor class. Um, ah. Sorry. Oh, 14. I'm at armor okay. class 14. So, yeah, one of them misses and the other one is a... Can I... Uh, oh, is can it I, 18 plus something, so that hits. Can I throw up my uh, armor shadow? Um. Oh, I think you do. You must... You, that lasts for like eight hours, right? Yeah. So what, what does that add to your armor class? Is that mage armor? Yeah. Uh, mage armor doesn't say anything it says 1a touch then it has a blank spot and says buff well, when you click on the spell it'll do the description of it oh um okay casting time one action range area touch components vsm a piece of cur it's cured 13 leather plus dexterity modifier oh where do you see that the description okay so He's got a plus one, so it, that makes his armor class 14, which is okay. kind of what it already is. Oh, okay. So it's already up. Yeah. Okay. I, gotcha. I think it's not, I think that that major it's armor is base armor. It's what? It says it makes his base armor that, so any additional effects would stack. He's Well, he's not wearing armor, so what has he got? He's got uh, an unarmored bonus. Of plus three. I, that must be because of his lizardy skin. Okay, so it would be that would make it seventeen. But this other one still hits anyway. No, it um, doesn't stack. It's natural armor. It doesn't stack. So he oh, okay. Different implication. So he, so that mage armor doesn't help you at all. Well, that's stupid. Yeah. yeah probably swap that out. I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, you take eight damage from his knife. Bastard. Why don't you guys just fly away? You know, yeah. stand around fighting. <laughs> <laughs> you try flying away with a giant stone attached to your back. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's why I'm a Buddhist. No attachments. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, uh, it's Drobo's turn. He is going to run. Twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Yep, he's attacking the Nullianac again. <laughs> oh, this violence! Yeah, yeah. So, oops, there we go. He's going to punch him because he can't find his sword. Uh, that hits. So he does five damage with that. And then he's going to do another um, flurry of blows so he can do two more attacks by kicking. Okay, one of those misses, and the other is probably a hit. Let's see, 10. It's 
16, yeah, that hits. So 1d4 plus 4. So 8 damage on that one. Whittling him down. Okay. All right. And I got to do take away his key points. Okay. Okay, so this righteous moves 10 feet over the wind wall right here. Oh. And this one also moves over the wind wall and he is uh, behind uh, Chertovir, but he's up too high to attack him right now. Because he's, he's uh, 15 feet up. Looks like I'm in trouble. And Oldest G. Uh, runs over here and grabs his sword. And H does the same. He runs over there, over here and also grabs his sword. And now it's Ralph's turn. Mm. Um, man, okay. Let's go ahead and... Uh... The best attack is Eldritch. Um, okay, well then I'm gonna go ahead and hit um, this guy with another Eldritch blast. Okay. Oh, did you put so in did your you damage not get more from spells? When you got hurt last time? Huh? No. So, uh, hold on. What? I was just asking if you didn't get more spells. I I uh, earlier I uh, did cause I got cause fear, but it doesn't seem to really do much against this guy. And I upped my yeah, Eldritch well, he blast made to his saving blast. Throw. So did so. you did you put in your damage when you got hurt last time? No. Oh no, I didn't. Where do I do that? Uh, on the hit points where it says fourteen out of fourteen, you click on there and then you put in the damage. All right, so I take eight away. Yeah. Okay, so I'm at six. So okay, so you're attacking him again with Eldritch Blast. Yeah. Roll to hit. 18 plus uh, 4. 18 plus 4. That hits. Yep. And then my damage is 2 plus can't remember. Two plus four, right? Okay, so that's six. Uh, six. Yep. Okay, he's he's starting to look pretty hurt. And after Ralph, this guy. is attacking Zoe again. So he's going to bite at you. Actually, oh, yeah, actually, you know, he, um, he actually looks at you and kind of moves away. He's going to go up here and attack Ralph. So you, you have an attack of opportunity. So that means if somebody breaks off of out of combat with you, you can like hit them as they run by. Oh. So uh, Zoe can roll to hit. Oh God, two. Okay, uh, two plus. Is this with your dagger? What are you hitting him with? Um, I was gonna do dagger. Okay. Uh, yeah. So two. It's probably not plus ten. So you didn't hit him. Uh, no. Okay. All right. So he's attacking Ralph. 
with his bite. So that's a 16 to hit, so that hits. 3d6 plus 2. So you take 8 damage. And I'm dead. Okay. Well, you're not dead. You're unconscious. Okay. And um, then it's Zoe's turn. And okay. So, Zoe, you uh, you feel this uh, mite inside of your hand working its way up your arm, and you take it. Uh, you take five more damage. Okay, hang on. And now it's up to you. Up to about where your elbow is. Oh, we're gonna have to cut her arm off. Wouldn't be the first time. Okay. Um. <laughs> <clears throat> Let me see. Hmm. Which one do I want to do? Of course, I can't do cure wounds on myself. Um. Yeah, you can. Oh, I can. Yeah. Fine, I'll do cure cure wounds on myself then. Okay. Yep, roll, uh, just, you just roll how much you're going to heal. Okay, and I roll eight-sided die. Okay. And Musette's going to be next. And then Chertovir. You have got to be kidding me. Okay, so total of seven. Okay. So you just put that in your hit points, but you push heal instead of damage. Okay, so I, I add seven. Yeah. Okay. Seven. All right. So you kind of feel the, the bug inside of your arm. It, it got pushed back a little bit. So now it's, it's back to about where your wrist is. And it's Musette's turn. Okay, so I'm gonna scooch it over here. Three, four, not oh, shoot, four, five. And okay, so I had already cast Healing Word earlier, but I actually have two. Okay. I have another one on my second level. So oh, okay. I'm gonna cast that on Ralph. And I think and, it, it heals more on second level. Yeah, I was going to say it at higher levels, when you cast a spell using a spell slot of second, second level or higher, the healing increases by 1d4 for each slot above first. So you do 2d4 plus something. Okay. So, oh, oh, right here. It says regain 2d4 plus 2. Okay. So one, two, so that's three plus two, five. Okay, so uh, Ralph, you had five hit points to yourself and you're conscious again. Yay, thank you. Okay, and now I am officially out of Healing Word. Oh, okay. And it's Chertovir's turn. I'm awake, I'm awake, I'm right here. Okay. Does that count as a rest for me? All right. Uh, so, no. yeah. <laughs> All right. So I got a, a righteous right behind me, right? Uh, yes. Okay. He, he's, he's he's above you. He's, he's 15 above feet me. above you, and he, he just came over the wind wall. But I can hit him with Actually, a spell from below, one right? That's 50, there's two righteous next to you. Jesus, one is right yeah. below you on the map. He's also okay. 15 feet in the air. Huh. And he's right. Oh, okay, he's also 15 feet in the air. He's, it's not he's like actually I can... over the top of the wind wall, so okay. he, he can't come down on the wind wall. He's going to have to move more to get to you. So how about I hit him with chromatic orb? Let's see. Okay, uh, which one do you want to hit? The one to the south the of one, you or the one to the east of you? The one to the south of me. Okay. The one that's over the, the wind wall. Maybe he'll fall into it. I don't know. <laughs> and I um, think that's an attack roll, chromatic orb. Yeah. Chromatic orb here says, uh, and I have to use that slot. So I'm going to cast it. And it says, I have to pick what sort of um, 
attack I want to do. It says you hurl a four inch diameter sphere of energy at a creature that you can see within range. You choose acid, cold, fire, lightning, poison, or thunder. So I'm going to do fire and okay. uh, make a range spell attack against the target. Can I, can I do that with a spell? Like I don't yeah. need to have a ranged weapon, right? If right. Yeah. Hits... And there's a ranged attack on the spell. So you okay. have to roll to so hit them. I'm going to roll to hit. Okay. 17. That's 17. Plus, yeah. Plus your spell attack bonus for the spell. Plus my spell attack bonus, which is plus five. That's 20. Yeah, so that totally hits. Okay. And then it says damage is 3d8. Wow. 3d8. So I roll a d8 three times. Yep. All right. Here we go. There goes nothing. One. Seven. Three. So that's 11. Okay. It is hurt really badly. Nice. Okay. Are you going to move also, or are you going to stay where you're at? Um, yeah. Can I move? Uh, can I move like five squares? Let's yeah. See. Yeah. And okay, you're not, that... they wouldn't be an attack of opportunity because they're too far away to reach you, even though they're right there because they're way up in the air. I'm going to move close to Musette. Oh, right okay. next to the Nullianak. Okay. Thank you. All right. And that's uh, Chirgovir's turn. And we're at the beginning of round five, and it's Jonathan's turn up on the up above the roof. Hang on. I got to get to the other screen. Okay, I'm going to move to that point that I was just on the roof. And so I'm going to like come over the roof. Ugh. And then once I'm there, I'm going to cast a minor illusion of myself. I don't know why this won't let me drag. There we go. Nope. Oh, because it thinks I'm inside the room. Yeah, so just go through the doorway and around. And then I'm going to here, like cast a minor illusion of myself carrying the papers like down here and okay. kind of walk. So it looks like I'm okay. over. So it looks like I continued on moving my full move. So it, it, the illusion is walking along the ground? Uh, well, no, I was going to have it like fly down. I guess I'll have to use silent image fly down okay. and like land and I will squawk to provide sound effects. Okay. All right. The, the, the Nolian Achilles. It's there. Get him. It has the papers. And um, yeah, so that's that's what and it is the Nolian Axe turn right now. So he's going to move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. He move, He can't quite get to you. And he's going to, uh, let's see. Take a tax of opportunity. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he, he fires a, uh, the, his, his uh, radiant blight attack on, on the uh, seagull down there. I can understand why Drovo would shoot Bentley after this. So when he did that, everybody that was near him gets an attack of opportunity. So that's Musette and Ralph. So you can uh, take a swing at him with whatever weapon you had in your hand at the time. Churd of yours there too. Yeah. And oh, Robo. right. Yeah, no, that's right. Because he, I was oh. looking at the wrong space. Yeah, so Churd of your also would get an attack with his sword. Okay. Who Do are I we have attacking? Uh, the, the Nolianak, as he was disengaging combat from you guys, you get an uh -huh. attack of opportunity. Oh, okay. So whatever we weapon roll... you used last is the one that's in your hand, so that's what you get to swing at him. Okay. Or if, I, if it's your gun, you just shoot your gun at him. Yeah, I had to shoot my gun. Okay, so uh, roll to hit. Ugh. Seven. Plus four. Eleven. 
Okay, yeah. So you fire your gun, but it misses. Okay, and uh, Ralph, you're laying on the ground, but you still can attack him. I'm gonna not the Nolan act, right? He's all the way over here. Yeah, you you because you attacked him as he was walking across. Yeah, he you. was walking by. Oh, yes. Yeah. Then I so want to you... bite him. Okay. Uh, yeah, roll to hit with your bite. <laughs> Twenty sided dice. I'm yeah. gonna crawl over there and bite him if he wants to. I got a sixteen. Wow. Nice. Plus, and that's plus three. Plus three. Yeah, so you hit him. Roll roll the damage. Ten sided dice. Sorry, just looking at him is I'm trying to remember. <clears throat> okay, <throat> and then I got oh, fuck. Uh, I rolled a one. Which die did you use for that? The ten sided dice? No, it's it's one d six plus one for the bite. So you ah, six. I'm sorry. Dice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, the okay. six sided dice. Over. Six sided yeah. dice. <laughs> Yep. So go ahead and roll that one. Ah! I rolled a three. Okay. Plus one. Mm -hmm. So you did four damage to him, biting his ankles as he went by. Yeah. Fuck that guy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Took a chomp. All right. He goes, ah! And uh, Chirdovir, you have your um, silken sword. Okay. My last attack was a chromatic orb, wasn't it? Yeah, but it's yeah. it's 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 a melee attack. It can't. Oh, be okay, gotcha. Melee attack. So I will use my sword. I'm gonna roll to hit. I got an eight plus okay. uh, plus five. That's thirteen. And then the damage is one d four plus three. One. D4. Oh wait, you got a you got a thirteen to hit. That's yeah. Right. That 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 misses. Oh, okay. Okay, so um, that was the Nolianax turn. Now it's uh, Drovo's turn. Oh, he shoot! Drovo got an attack too. Yeah. Drovo kicks him. Yeah. That's my boy. And that does not hit. That's a ten. Okay. Some boy. <laughs> I'm gonna whoop his All ass right. when he gets home. Yeah. Um, but now it's Drovo's turn. He. Oh, geez. Didn't he try kicking the Nolianak? He did when it was running away. Okay. So now he's going to run over here and attack uh, this creature, the Voider. Good. That's the only, well, it's not the only left, but. No, he, and he missed. Ugh. Okay, and um, now it is the Righteous's turn. So it floats down to the ground level, and it goes 10 feet, so it's here. And the other one does the same thing. They can't move very far, so it's here. Okay, so now... Altus G is going to see if he figures out that the uh, that the bird is an illusion. That's his action. Yeah. And what does he have to get? Uh, DC thirteen investigation he, check. Yeah, he um, he he says it's there. I see it, and he runs up to it. But if that's his action, then I guess he doesn't get to attack. So he's he's running up to fake Jonathan. And the other one is doing the same thing. And he failed. So he is also running up to fake Jonathan. Man, if I had fireball. Oh yeah. <laughs> Just get them all to bunch up and Okay, and now it's Ralph's turn. Um, so you're lying on the ground. It'll take half of your movement to get up, but you can uh, get up and walk and do attacks and stuff if you want. Well, this vo this voider right here next to me, I'm going to attack him, uh, okay. and I'm I'm going to go ahead and uh, just I'm just going to hit him with uh, shoot him. Okay. I'm going to hit him with my gun. 
All shoot right. him, my guy. Uh, yeah, roll to hit. I rolled a 14. <laughs> Woo! 14 plus, plus something. Three. I think it's 14 yeah, so plus 3. Yeah. Yeah. And His armor my, class is 12. So you is it, the, is it the six sided dice again? You uh, go a little what bit. does it say for the damage on the gun on your gun? The damage is says two d six plus one. Okay, so you roll oh, yeah, that twice, twice and add one, and that's your damage. Uh, uh, Eleven. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So that uh, takes a big chunk out of it. It doesn't seem like it feels pain. It just kind of looks at the wound and looks at you. If I eat him, will I get infected with something? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Ooh. That one still it has is. the guiding bolt on it, right? Oh. Oh, you can roll again to see if you get a critical hit. Me? Uh, which dice do I roll? The 20-sided die again. See if you get better than a 17. I got a 12. OK. That's fine then. We're just seeing if you got a critical hit, it would be double damage. Okay, and now it is the voider's turn. <clears throat> hmm. Okay, it uh, turns to Drovo and attacks him. Well, that's a 12-sided die. That's not going to work. OK, and it misses, and then it claws at him. And it also misses. Zoe's turn, and Musa is right. after Zoe. Well, let's see. I am going to. All right, there's a dagger and a dagger plus two. So I think I'm going to try the dagger plus two this time. Yeah, that's your that's your uh, your magic dagger, the plus mm -hmm. two. One. Okay, so I roll the 20 sided die, right? Yep. And oh, gosh darn it. Two, no, one, two, two. Okay. worse. Right, so you missed. Obviously. <laughs> okay, Musette. You need to try to roll that dice properly. I wanna um these aren't like crates or anything, right? They are, yeah, they're wooden crates. Oh, okay. Right. But if I move on top am I allowed to move on top of it? Uh you would need to make an acrobatics or athletics check to get up there, but you could do it. Ugh. Okay. They're they're uh it. they're about six feet high. Ugh. Okay, I'm just going to turn this way. I wanted to put a wall of fire around the uh, wormy boys. Okay, yes. is the wall of is the is the wall of uh, the wind wall is concentration, right? Uh, hold on. If it says concentration on it, then yes, you, and it yeah. says so up the wind to a wall minute. will disappear when you do the firewall, which is probably fine. I'm sure that's. Yeah, yeah, I think all those guys are dead. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. So where are you going to put the firewall? Wall of fire. It says that I can. Where'd it go? Oh, wait, sorry. Wrong one. Okay. Uh, it, it, you can make it up to 60 feet long, 20 feet high, one foot thick, or a ringed wall up a 20 feet in diameter, 20 feet high oh. and one foot thick. So I would rather just put a ring around them completely. Oh, around those two, uh, the two righteous? Yeah, the two righteous. Okay. So Rob, can you put a 20 foot circle around them and take away the wind wall? Okay, and I gotta make sure that I use up a charge. And then it Is says, it... Uh, when the wall appears, each creature within its area must make a dexterity save and saving throw. Okay. On a failed, it takes a 5d8 fire damage. Oh, okay. What's the save on that, the DC? Attack save, dex 12. Okay, thank you. 
I don't think these guys have very good dexterity. Ooh. Oh, they actually, they do. Ah, damn it. But he rolled really badly. So one of them took full damage. <clears throat> and the other one passed. Ooh. Okay, so he takes half damage, I think, if he yeah, passed. Yeah, or half as much damage on a successful save. Okay, so roll the damage and then we'll uh, see what happens to them. Okay. Is that a D8? Yeah, uh, what does it say on the spell? 5D8 damage. Wow, okay. Which is the eight? So you roll an eight-sided oh, die five times. Oh, okay. Six and add it plus all five up. is 11, plus eight is 19, plus eight is 27, plus eight is 35. Holy crap. Okay. Yep. They're both dead. Even Woo! with the half. Hell yeah. Wow. <laughs> Go, girl! Okay. And you there's a big circular using your spells. There. And the, uh, the, the, the warehouse is starting to catch fire. Oops. Oops. <laughs> that was my plan. <laughs> that was your plan to catch the warehouse on fire? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Chernovir, it's your turn. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna walk out of there. <laughs> Wait, is there, are there any other enemies left? Yeah, we still have a voider, there's right? A voider in, oh, there's in a voider, the, okay. In there with you. Yeah, I shot him and he's okay. like... One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna move towards the exit of the barn. Okay, and there's the, the Nolian act in front of you and the uh, out the door and the voider oh. behind you. Oh, okay. I think the voider is more important. Um, I'm going to, Jesus, um, I'm going to throw a Numa bullet from Imagica. Okay, okay I'm going to try right. casting that. A bullet of breath force energy streaks towards a creature within range. So I put my hand to my mouth and I <laughs> throw it. And it says here that, uh, yeah, so I'm going to roll for hit. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oops, no, that's the wrong one. Hang on. Where's my 20 sided here? I got a 20. I kid you not. Wow. Yes. All oh, right. Yeah. So you got a 20. So roll right there. your damage and then we'll double it. Okay, roll my damage. Damage says for the Numa. Numa Numa. Uh, ba, 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 ba. It says 1d10 plus 3. So 1d10 okay. plus 3. So 10 sided die. Seven plus three, ten. That's the damage. Okay, so ten uh doubled is twenty. So that voider is dead. Woo! Yeah. yeah. Well time. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I haven't lost a single point yet. That's crazy. Yeah. All right. And um <clears throat> and uh, when that happens, um Zoe feels the 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 movement of her arm uh stops oh great okay because the voider is dead awesome so i don't have cooties anymore <laughs> i think you have a dead cootie oh, yeah. okay okay and and now it's jonathan's turn all right Ooh, well this. i will move to just where i can kind of see uh what's going down down there but i don't want to reveal myself Okay. And then I will change the silent image so it looks like it's kind of flying up toward the truck. Uh, but okay. I want to make, make like it look like it's flying, but it's kind of injured. And that's why I got to okay. keep landing. Oh, okay. Maybe the sword throw hurt me a little more and just kind of have it land on top of the truck bed. Okay. And, uh, and the Nolian X says, Get him, you idiots. <laughs> Finally, I agree with something he says. And that's my yeah. turn. Okay, and it's his, it's the Nolian Axe turn, and he uh, runs up here. He climbs on top of the truck. Actually, I don't, <laughs> it's not letting me put him on top of the hood there, but he's on top of the hood. And he, let's see if he can do that again. 
He can. He does uh, radiant blight again on at the uh, image. Do I make an attack roll to see if he hits the thing? Sure. I think what we were doing is you just make an attack roll at my AC, and that's me okay. trying to move it around so it doesn't get hit. Okay. Which is not incredibly high, so. Yeah. Okay, that's 22 to hit. That would do it. Okay. So uh, a, a big globe of, of energy goes towards the seagull and, and hits it. Um, but uh, what would happen to it, what would normally happen to it, didn't. The seagull is not getting, it's, it's not getting hurt the way he's expecting. I'm immune. I'm super magical. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Actually, that's a good point. He's going to make a uh, perception check based on that. Wow, that's not very good. Well, it's a 16. Yeah, he's he's just confused. OK, uh, Drovo's turn. There's a, a fire raging behind him, so <laughs> he's He's going to run out the door and punch one of these cultists. <laughs> oh, I, bet. I think I'm starting to figure out what political party he is. <laughs> so uh, he did um, seven damage to him. To H. Yeah, that, that warehouse is getting more and more on fire. Yeah. And so many dead guys to scroll through. Who's Ralph there? can walk, <laughs> okay. right? Ralph is not. I can walk now, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so Cultist G, he sees Drovo there punching his friend, but his orders are to get the bird. So he's going up there, climbing on the truck. Sword. And he's gonna he's gonna tackle him. Okay. <laughs> wow, the, he rolled high, so he dives on the bird and tries to tackle him, but he, he the bird kind of goes right through him. Oh god. <gasps> okay. So at this point, everybody's you know the two of them both realize that it's not real. Oh, where where is actually uh, Jonathan? Is he just inside? Next to me? He's on the truck okay. outside. He, he's yeah. on. Uh, Jonathan is on the roof of the building. Okay, I got He's it. He's literally yeah. just like yeah. teasing these guys. And so he yells out, it's not real. This isn't the bird. And uh, this guy looks around and all he sees is Drovo. So he's going to attack him. No, oh, cultist H. Yeah. I see him. He just got kicked really hard. Three. So he missed. And now it's Ralph's turn. Okay, so uh, ain't nothing going on in here anymore. Yeah, let's get out of here. I can only go six spaces, so let me turn mine. One, yep. two, three, four, five, six. And How many hit points are you I'm, at now? Huh? I'm, what, sorry? How many hit points are you at now? Oh, I went up five, didn't I? Oh, what okay. It? Yeah, it looks like you have six. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm back up to six. Wow. Yeah. Okay. You're doing better than Drovo, though. Oh, yeah. He, he has four. I'm going to use my pistol to uh, hit this guy. H. Oh, the cultist H? Hit, hit cultist H. Okay. Or G. No, H. Okay. He's distracted. And so, All right. Roll to hit with your pistol. Oh, uh, gosh. Um, uh, roll the 20 sided dice for the pistol, then the six for the damage. Yeah, and the, and the, and the, the pistol is uh, plus three to hit, so you add three to it. Okay, so. Ah, falling. Damn it. Nine. I rolled a. Oh, I rolled a 19. Woo! Oh, wow. So that's 22. That t definitely hits him, so you roll okay. the damage. And then I roll the six for my damage. Yeah. Uh, two times and add three. 
I think. 9, 10, 11. My damage is 11 to him. Well, he is... He, that that uh, bullet goes right through his neck, and at first he doesn't he doesn't realize that he just got shot through the neck, and he's he's getting ready to swing his sword again, and then he kind of uh, he kind of drops his weapon and falls on the ground. Yeah, boy. He's dead. He killed someone else. All right. Killed more people than you, though. It's not a competition. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Next up is Zoe. Yeah. Okay. You said is the MVP of today. <laughs> so since everybody's outside, I'm going to go outside too. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm not really around anybody that I could hit within reason. So is that is that good enough for my turn, or do I have to do something? Uh, no. You, you should. Well, you got a gun, right? No. I do, yeah. but you he's could, you kind could of at a Nullianac weird angle. Or... Can I hit him from here? Yeah, you yeah. could hit him or cultist or the Nullianac. Who's on the hood? Wait, there's a door, a barn door between her and the Nullianac, right? Yeah, so she oh, only, her only option is yep. G. Yeah, you have to hit G. Okay, you, let me shoot the G door. then. All right, so where am I? Pistol, auto G's. pistol automatic, so let's see. And Musette will be next. 12 is what I rolled for my 20 sided die. Plus. Then my do for damage 2d6 plus 2. So 6. Okay. 6. So 12 plus 2 is 14. That hits him. Woohoo! What's your damage? That's a handgun, right? So it's. Damage is 2d6 plus 2. Okay. Yep. So roll the six sided die twice and add 2. That's what I just did. Oh, I got well, two did? sixes. I got oh, two really? sixes, and then plus two is tw 14 total. Oh, well, he's dead. Yeah. Yeah, you shot him uh, through the spine, and it came out of his, uh, came out of his, his sternum. Yes. And then so it he hit tumbles his arm off the roof of the truck around. and falls down in front and falls down uh, below it there. There we go. Uh -huh. So Mr. 28 is uh, by himself now. Okay. Yeah. Oop, turn around. We got to get that truck, though. Okay, so that's pretty much turn. established. We're already taking the truck. So. Can, yeah. okay. Can I just yell out at Jonathan, drop the paper in the fire? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you, that's a free action. You can still take your turn. Well, it's not your turn yet, but okay. it'll be your turn after Musette. Okay. Yeah, I was just waiting on permission to go. Oh, yeah, please. It's your turn. Okay, one, two, wait, motherfucker. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six. And, and I'm assuming you're dropping the, the wall of fire, right? You probably don't need that anymore. Yeah, I don't need the wall of fire anymore. Okay. Yeah, I can keep the fire in the wind. <laughs> yeah. And no, the wind is already gone yeah. because I moved my concentration to the fire. Yeah. But also, the fire is just kind of doing its own thing and destroying the barn. Um, so, can I get past this barn door? This is a weird angle. Looks like it. Um, I mean, this is up to Ryan. Oh yeah. How many? How much movement do you have left? Oh, I see. That's that's as far yeah. as you could get. Yeah. Yeah, you can. You have, you you have to lean uh, lean over to the left a little bit, but you okay. can do it. Well, I mean, my pistol is range of fifty, so Pretty I good. will shoot that. Okay. Ugh, Eleven uh, plus four, fifteen. Fifteen is exactly what you needed to hit him. Oh, okay. So two d six plus two. Uh, six plus six is twelve plus two wow. is fourteen. Wow! 14. He, you you clipped him really bad. He is uh, in terrible shape. Okay, and now it's Chertovir's turn. All right. Uh, let me move one, two, three, four, five. It's looking panicked, and it says, "Just honor your agreement." Uh, yeah, our agreement is null and void, like the voiders you summoned. 
anyway, um, so can I hit him from here? Yeah, you can. But uh, Musette's in, in, in me, the In right? the same way that Musette did. Okay. All right. So you're just I leaning, will. You're leaning even more to the left. Okay. <laughs> so I still have, let's see, what spell slots do I have? Since I've used N Numa Bullet, but I have four slots and I've used two, can I use Numa can, Bullet again? You can use it again, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to cast that one and let's roll to hit. 14. Plus that's a something. 14 to hit. So that's a uh, plus five. That's 19. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. So you hit him. <laughs> and and uh, let's see. Uh, it says damage is 1d10 plus three. So 1d10, 1d10 plus three. I rolled a three plus three, six damage. Okay. So you, uh, you, Put your hands together and and uh, let out a breath of of air, mm -hmm. and it flies right into his face. I, I and uh, the hands kind of break apart, so they're not in their praying position anymore. Uh -huh. And the uh, Nolianak topple, topples off of the truck, and he's dead. Yeah, we did it, guys. Okay, okay. burn the building I, down. And can I tell yeah. Jonathan to drop the papers in the fire? Oh, okay. Yeah. So. He, I have a know, question he's though. Close enough Wait. To hear that. Change the illusory Jonathan into just like fire, like it starts on fire. Okay. I don't, real fast though, what if we want to see what's in those papers? Oh yeah, I know what's in the papers. That's um, why I'm having the illusory Jonathan start on fire. And, kind of... and Drovo says, "Which one of you grabbed my silken sword?" Uh, and then I'll just move down, and I'll we didn't. say the same thing. The silken sword wasn't my problem. Yeah, keep track of your own shit, dude. Yeah, we didn't we didn't grab it. We're, do you know who took it? Uh, I woke up without it. Huh? Well, well, I, oops. Can we search the Nolianak? See if he has it. Can you live uh, without yeah, the yeah, silken make it, sword? Make I mean. an investigation check. I'm going to search the dead number G for keys. Investigation okay. check that is... I roll a 20? Uh, yeah, and add the investigation bonus to it. Five plus investigation plus five, that's 10. Okay. Um, <laughs> the, so the Nolianak has his two weapons on him. Uh, and really, there's a pocket with some coins, but that's it. There's nothing else. Huh. Is that fire going to destroy the truck? Does that guy have keys? Yeah, like I, I'm on it. Um, okay, yeah, make yeah. Also, make an investigation check for Jonathan. I don't know. Those cultists weren't very bright. What if they just <laughs> left One. the keys in there? Oh, they could be in the truck, right? They could oh, still be in the ignition. Yeah. Oh, you rolled a one. Twenty-one. Oh, twenty-one. Okay, that's a little better than a one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah so I mean, on you, you find his his weapon and his clothes, and he's got he's got a little bit of money on him, um, but that's it. Are the keys in the ignition? Yeah. Okay, I'll make sure <laughs> start it from outside. Okay. Yeah, and it it uh, it and it starts. It doesn't so, start. It does. Yeah. Oh. Okay. It, so uh, it, it sputters a little bit, but it starts. Okay, so we all just like hop in. Boop. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess we can't go back in there and look for Drovo's sword. Um, uh, are you immune to fire? <laughs> I don't know. Let me check. I mean, even if Livingston could fly over the flames, I don't think he can carry it over. Right. Um, I mean, I say the guy should have luck. I mean, there's plenty of swords yeah, in the sea. Just, I mean, no, but aren't those swords specific to each person? Oh. Because of their uh, importance. Can I? What would happen if I run in there with with into the fire? You'll die. Uh, I would take damage, right? Um. Well, yeah, that it's not quite up to the entrance yet, so you could run in the entrance and look around. Well, I wanted to run o over to where they were holding him and check the desk you 
Yeah, that would be really hard to pull off. Okay. Yeah, we just wait till the whole building burns down. I mean, the sword won't burn. But... Yeah. Okay, well, I guess well, I'm going to give it up for Lost and get in the car with them. Okay. Hold on. I'll say, hold on a second, and I'm going to give the uh, letter I've still got in my mouth to Drovo. Um, say, keep this. We may want to use it for evidence later, and then okay. I'll go see if I can find your sword, and I guess I'll fly over to the See if I can like squeeze. Is there any holes or anything I can squeeze on the other side? Try to like squeeze. There was a window, there. right? Yeah. Um, there's two yeah, windows. Yeah, yeah. There, there, you squeezed in. There are there are windows that don't open. They're just glass. And last time you squeezed in through the eaves. Yeah, but I was trying to find some place that wasn't on fire, so I could get into the the room. Yeah. Oh, well, and, the, and the roof's not quite on fire yet. The the walls yeah. are, and the and the floor. Okay, so I'll try to poke my way through, and then okay. I can search this desk. Can I? Quick. Okay, yeah, the, the I... desk doesn't really have anything on it other than the pen, you know, that he signed the papers mm -hmm. with. Uh, Is there anything under the desk? Just just the chain that was attached to uh, Drovo's leg. Maybe the sword is inside the cab of the car underneath the seats. Uh, it's probably not here. I'm going to get out before I start on fire. Yeah. Okay. I'm not, we don't have time or, you know, the chance to search all the bodies and I, I don't I, think they would I have find it unlikely they would have left the weapon in the room with him and they yeah. probably didn't stash it anywhere in the barn i bet they they yeah. probably didn't even take it with them when they kidnapped them but i guess i'll meet you guys back at benny's okay all okay. right so i i pile in the car who's driving okay yeah who's who's driving not me uh do i know how to drive I'll drive. Drove <laughs> <laughs> uh, the wings. motorcycle a few it days. It would be previous. good. Uh, Chur, it would be good for Churduvir to at least navigate for okay, somebody else. Okay, so I guess driving. I will drive. Okay, since oh. I drove the motorcycle. Because well, motorcycles can... and trucks work. The Obviously, same. they're the same, <laughs> Joe. Yeah. Okay, so Ralph. you try some uh, some pedals, and we go around like. Rrr, rrr, yeah. rrr. I don't know. We need to make a decision. This place car, is burning down. Probably fast. driven cars before. I mean, you've traveled all over the world. You've probably driven something. Who? Musette. I think oh, you've probably okay. driven a, a pickup truck before. Okay, let's go. All right. All right. Give me directions. Let's go. Okay. Uh, yeah, and with with the with the two of you. Um, with driving and, and, and navigation, you're, you're able to, it takes an hour to drive back like it did to get there, but you're able to make it back in the truck. Um, when you pull up, Bentley comes out and he says, um, so what happened? Can, can I pull my brother aside for just a second? Yeah. And I tell him, look, Drovo, I, I saw what happened in the Boston Bowl. I know that something bad is about to happen, but I'm going to ask you to please don't do anything that you will regret. What, what, what do you mean something is about to happen? Well, when I looked in the Boston Bowl, I saw that you were going to attack a Bentley. And I'm just asking you not to do that. You're free. We took care of it. We got these papers to look at. We'll use them as evidence. Why, so let's... why would I attack Bentley? Well, why did you attack the Nullianac, uh when we I, were? I just don't about know. I, I, I didn't. I just. It's like I was in my body, hmm. and I knew. I could feel myself running at him, but it wasn't a choice that I made. Can I? Can I do detect magic or something like that? Is that a spell that I need to have? Uh, yeah, there is a spell for detect magic. Oh, so I don't have it. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so I, I, I'm assuming that my brother might be under the effect of someone, possibly Cassius. Um, let's see. I don't want him to shoot Bentley. Um, can and I Bentley just... Bentley doesn't even know about your vision because he yeah. wasn't there for that. I know. Ah, oh, if there was only some sort of like, can I, uh, a charm is also a spell, right? Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. I don't have it either. <laughs> okay. Well, I right, just stayed yeah. real close to my brother. 
and and look at what he's doing see if i can stop him if he does anything out of the ordinary i don't know okay um and bentley says bentley yeah bentley said so yeah i'm glad that you got drovel back safe so what what happened so anybody? you got the nolian x truck out there where where is he he went back to the first dominion where he came from and uh yeah gifted us this truck hey would you uh maybe trade this truck for uh some of that jewelry over there like that what? diamond earring dude trade. we're gonna need that truck if we go somewhere else i don't need a truck oh did you yeah. did you steal fly. this truck from the nolianek no no no, no no it's not stolen nobody's gonna be looking for it yeah well, I think you should still put it into the into the shed with the motorcycle. It's a good idea. Let's do that. He he uh he gets out his keys and and goes over to the uh, padlock and opens it and opens the doors. Okay. All right. So I guess Musette drives well, the he's car. He's doing in. that. I want to pop one of the stones. See if there's a diamond in the uh, jewelry. Just kind of pop it out. Well, okay. he's gone. All right. Yeah. Make another investigation check. Uh, I hate these. Oh, that's not bad. Um, 21. Oh. Yeah. There, well, there were, there were three rings, and uh, two of them look like they're pretend stones. You know, they're not even, but one of them does look like a real diamond. Right, and they're, gonna... the funny thing is, they're all priced about the same. Yeah. Well, I'm going to use the um, wire and my ID tag to pop the stone out, and then I'm going to swallow it in my and keep it in my gizzard. Are you trying to hide this from Bentley? He's out um, putting the. He's unlocking oh, the. Oh, that's shed. right. Yeah. Okay. So no, I'm just trying to do it real quick. Okay. <laughs> All right. Swallow it. Put it in my. You swallow my gizzard. the diamond. Yeah, put in my gizzard, you know, where the birds keep their the rocks and they grind oh, stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. So I'll always have it. It's like nature's pocket. All right. Um, the gizzard's so nature's you, pocket? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you guys are, are able to uh, to put the, to get the car into the shed. It's a tight squeeze. And I'm going to put the ring back and I'm going to use prestidigitation to create a non-magical trinket that looks like the diamond and just put it back in there. And that'll just last for a little while, an hour. Oh, wow. Okay. So it looks like it has the stone in it. Uh, I had a plan, but that's kind of like, can, can I wave at Jonathan and ask him to get on my shoulder so I can ask him something? Or you can just ask yeah. me, why do you want me on your shoulder? Huh? Did, did you go out to put the, the car away or did you stay in with Drovo? Uh, I stayed with Drovo. Yeah, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on him. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to be a possibility, but I asked Jonathan, can you make, when we get in there, can you make an illusory Bentley? Um, so my brother, I think my brother is under someone's control and i saw in the boston bowl i mean we all saw it that he's going to try to shoot bentley can you create an illusory bentley when you guys walk in there with my brother uh i could create an illusory bentley i could try to charm your brother or i could try to charm bentley yeah okay yeah can you charm my brother when we get in there so so he doesn't shoot bentley because i think he's under control by someone when you get in where in, into the uh, headquarters, into the 77 Wonders of the Imagica. I, I think you're in there already. Oh, are we? Okay. Yeah. And they just yeah. went out. To okay, so truck. can you charm my brother when, before Bentley comes in here? Sure, I can try. And 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 uh, Drovo is standing next to you. I mean, I don't know if you tried to, to hey, say, hey, oh. don't listen to me while I say this. Thing. Oh, um, well... <laughs> I when I asked them to come on my shoulder, I walked a, a few feet away and I, I whispered that to uh Okay. Do I have to roll for like stealth? Um I mean, no, it's like, okay. Yeah, I Dover didn't realize that enough. Jonathan and Chirdevir were friends now. <laughs> hey, we're like, all friends, we're all buddies. For each other and stuff. 
I, I, I tell you what, I, I tell Jonathan. I come cheap, a little bit of French toast and some jam. And yeah, if you do ah, that for me, okay. I'll give you my breakfast tomorrow. Sold. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that way, it's there's a trade. So, so are you making you're charming so you someone, or you're making an illusion? I um, was going to. I'm going to use t my two sorcery points to make another spell slot, just so I don't have to do it like later. Okay. And then I guess try to charm person on Drovo. Drovo. Well, also, if, if anybody that wanted to take a short rest, they could have done it on the drive back. I was okay. resting. Okay. That's all I can do. <laughs> okay. And so it would be DC 13 Wisdom. And this is, uh, oh, Charming Drovo? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. He got an 11. So he's charmed. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Whew. Feeling a little better about that. Hey, Drovo, how you doing? And I'll just Hello, uh, fly on his talking shoulder. bird? Why is there a talking bird? Dude, you just saw cultists and voiders and... and <laughs> And righteous, is a talking bird really that strange in the Imagica, my brother? Yes. <laughs> okay. Birds don't talk. Okay. Train to talk. Hi. Birds Hi. Aren't real. Food. Please. Please, food. Yeah. Pretty bird. Pretty bird. I don't. I. I don't have any food. I'm sorry. So, talking bird. I'm just gonna talk like a like a uh, bird talks. You know, like yeah, he's parroting. Yeah. I like, well, he's just, you know, he's just repeating stuff. Don't worry about it, Drovo. Like nuzzle up against him saying pretty, pretty bird. <laughs> <laughs> pretty oh, bird. Okay. Pretty bird. Squawk. Squawk. So he's charmed. I mean, is, is there anything you want to do with that? Uh, no, I, I'm just going to wait until. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Right on his shoulder. It lasts for an hour. Okay. You know, and again, okay. you know, well, at this point, I mean, Muzet and and uh, and Bentley have come back in from putting the car away. Awesome, awesome. Um, so nothing's going on with Drovo and Bentley. Uh, no, because he's charmed. Okay. So. Okay, so why did they kidnap Drovo? Now that we're in a safe place and kind okay. of figure out what happened. Uh, so here's what the papers said. They wanted my brother to withdraw from the Zordorexian Council and the Greater Council of the Imagica. They wanted him to sign the paper that said, I renounce all politics and accept the worship of Apexamendios. Um, I have no idea why they thought this was going to work after kidnapping him, because obviously this would be signed under duress. But... You're talking about guys who literally threw their swords up in the air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, my assumption is their plan was to make him sign this and then kill us all and then show up and say that, you know, Drovo had signed this, uh, you know, possibly still with Drovo captured uh, somehow. But, uh, but uh, Bentley, can I, can I have a word with you in private? Uh, yes, of course. Okay. So I guess I'll pull Bentley aside and I'll say, look, um, I want to know if you had anything to do with this because uh, when I, I looked at the Boston Bowl and I saw what would happen when we got back here with my brother and my brother was shown in the Boston Bowl grabbing a gun and shooting you. We have him Whoa. charmed right now. We have him charmed. And I think he might be under control by someone, possibly Cassius. So what do you think we should do? Well, first of all, I didn't have anything to do with this kidnapping. I mean, I was trying to recruit him, so it would be against my interest to have him kidnapped when I was trying to recruit him for the for the squad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know but that's alarming that you saw him shooting me. I mean, does everything that the, does everything in the Boston Bowl come to pass? Well, it depends, but I, I didn't want to take any chances. Um, so 
I guess, is there any way that we can put my brother in a room with a lock while we figure out what's going on? Uh, yeah, yes, we, we could lock him in one of the bedrooms. Okay. Can I use minor illusion to create a, a whisper next to um, Joe DeVere's ear that says, are you sure it's your brother that's the problem and not Bentley? Yeah, I kind of take pause and I, I think, I don't know, I, I need, I need, I need everybody to. So if we talk about this openly with Bentley, is he going to understand what we're talking about? Is he going to be aware? Um, well, he, he, just... he wouldn't hear the whisper. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. So I've got an easy solution for this. I'm going to fly up potential solution. I'm just going to fly over to uh, Bentley's shoulder now and start rubbing my head up against him and go, pretty bird, pretty bird, and cast charm person on him as well. Oh boy. Okay. okay. Uh, wisdom 13, you said? Yes, sir. Okay. Is it concentration for the other spell? Do you have, does no. that drop now? Nope. Charm person's okay. just duration one hour. Well, he failed. He's, he's charmed. Okay. So he what says, are you thinking? Yeah, you are, a, you are a very nice bird, Mr. Jonathan. Yes, I am. Can you tell us everything you've had to do with, uh, everything you know about uh, Drobo's disappearance. Well, you, um, I went out and, and asked around and uh, no one, no one had heard about the Nolian Act, except there are some people who seem to get angry and close their doors and didn't want to talk to me. Oh, well, um, how could they not want to talk to such a handsome man? Well, thank you. But yes, I don't, it, they, they seemed very secretive. Um, uh, and you heard my phone call with, with, uh, Cassius. He didn't seem to have anything to do with it. And that's all, you know, that that's everything, huh? Uh, I, well, I mean, I, I recognized the term, the Aboriginal children, because it's something that he used to say. We're the Aboriginal children. Uh, he okay. was upset about the reconciliation. Uh, he felt like it was a trick to kill Hepexamendios. Hmm. Well, um, how about some more French toast? Uh, hmm. There's probably some left over in the refrigerator. Oh, I don't want it cold. Could you go heat it up for me? I'll take a plate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He All goes, right. what, you still didn't tell me what happened out, out there. Oh, it was a bit of a barn burner, but uh, <clears throat> we made it out. We, we, we did okay. Um, we had a, some aggressive negotiations. Um, but did I you kill did everyone? Do. I didn't kill anyone. I mean, you as a group. <laughs> uh, I'm, like st Muset. I'm still kind of considering what's going on, and I'm like wondering whether the problem is my brother or like John. No, I'm said. over at a bookshelf, like just. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess I'll slap over to Ch Cho Devere's shoulder and say, I think. I don't think Bentley had anything to do with it. I'm not sure about your brother. I guess I could reveal I talked and talked to him. And and Bentley goes downstairs to start working on pancakes, or I mean on okay. French toast. Okay. And, and and actually speaking of that, um, the door opens and a couple uh, a couple come in. A married looks like a married couple, and uh, Chertovir and Musette recognize them. They were the uh, the bandits that tried to attack their uh, car. Not, not those guys again. Yeah, yeah. They, they look at you and they step back a little stunned and they go, uh, is Bentley here? Um, what do you guys want? <laughs> ben Bentley hired us to procure items for the shop. 
Uh, when was that? Uh, yesterday. Hmm. Let's see. So is that what your job is? He came to us and asked us if we'd heard of uh, if we'd heard of a Nellianek, and we hadn't. Um, and he uh, he noticed that we had a nice collection of procured items, and asked us if uh, if we'd like to work for him procuring items for the store. And uh, <clears throat> the 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 woman says, "By the way, my name is Bustle." And this is my husband, Pancake. Okay. Those are well, dumb names. Both <laughs> but. Well, Bentley is busy right now, so you'll have to come back later. Uh, okay. Okay. We'll 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 come back. Uh, what what would be a good time? Maybe an hour. No. Sure. Maybe a little earlier. <laughs> He he looks at at the at at uh, Jonathan and kind of shakes his head and like what? Wait, what? Pretty bird. Come back tomorrow. <laughs> okay, okay. We'll 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 come back tomorrow. And they they go out the door. Okay. Interesting. So it is true. Oh, what? Sorry. What were you going to say, Catalina? Musette? Musette, yes. <laughs> I was going to say, weren't those people, uh, didn't they look familiar? Yes, the they, they tried to attack us when we were driving the bike. Uh, they did the attack us. They did, yeah. yeah. I they guess tried they to didn't. take our bike. Well, it looks like Bentley is a fence. Um, it looks like he, he, the stuff in the store is stolen. So that's, I'm, not, I'm surprised that someone in the Jericho squad would, would operate that way, which makes me a little uncomfortable with uh you know with the whole thing but um but he they did say that he asked them about the nullianax so he was looking for my brother that seems like what what he was doing but i i, I don't know i, I i'm just well, jonathan seems like those... seemed... yeah oh sorry i was just gonna say it seems like those people are uh just generally work for hire mm -hmm. yeah. so when they ambushed us I don't think they I knew wonder who, we who hired them. I could always follow them and find out, though I wouldn't be here to um, talk to the charmed people. Yeah. Well, I, I, they said that they worked for him, that he hired him yesterday, right? So when we saw them, Ryan, was that the day that we met them? Or I, I don't know how many days have gone by. Uh, it's just been uh, two days. Yes, it's oh. only been a few days. Okay. But if they say that they were hired yesterday, they could have only been talking about looking for the Nillianac and also whatever items to procure. Sure, sure. Yeah. But that doesn't right. necessarily mean that they weren't previously hired right. by Bentley. Right. I'm just going to go ask him. I'll, just, I'll be right back. Okay. You know, just kind of hop down the stairs um, and go sidle up next to him while he's making French toast. Be like, hey, Two, uh, what were their names? Bustle and Pancake, Pancake. were just upstairs. Uh, what's your involvement with them? Seems like uh, they might be able to get us some useful items. How just much a sec, I'm having sound problems. I'm going to switch out of this AirPods into headphones. Sorry. Everything's uh -oh. cutting out and it sounds really bad. Uh oh. Okay. Ryan, and if you don't mind uh, taking a look. Yeah, in the chat. I need to um, I need to switch it on Zoom also. Okay. I need to take a bathroom. There we go. Okay, now can someone talk? Hello? Yeah. yeah. Test, now, test, test. Awesome. Okay, that's better. I was hearing everybody's voices were like, <laughs> so I was having a hard time. So you went downstairs to talk to Bentley? Oh. Yes. I was going to ask him about his current and prior involvement with um, Pancake and Bustle. Oh yeah, yeah. They're they're, they're a nice couple. I I, I asked them if they could find some things for the store. I we tried just I don't I don't like robbery, but I we try to uh, steal from people that maybe won't notice. How long have you been working with them? 
Uh, well, I just talked to them yesterday. They haven't done anything for me yet. And how did you meet them? I was out uh, when I was out gathering information. I saw that they uh, they seem to have some some items that probably didn't originally belong to them. So I thought maybe they could help us. Hmm. Well, all right. They'll be coming by tomorrow. Wow. Did they? Did, so they? Yeah. They they stopped by, huh? Yeah. They seem nice enough. I might go. We might have an order for them as well if they're good at procuring things. I think so. They seemed like they were. Uh, well, did they come recommended to you by anyone, or how did you meet them, or how did you decide to hire them? They did not come recommended to me. I just talked to them a little bit, and I figured out that they were thieves. And I thought, well, maybe they could be thieves for a good, uh, a good cause. Okay. Huh. Well, I hope that works out for you. And well, for us. We, the, the one thing about uh, being an outpost for Jericho way out here, uh, away from the main office, is that we don't get a lot of support. We have to be mostly self-sufficient. So our store actually has to make money. We have to collect things. Uh, speaking of which, did you uh, bring back anything from the uh, from the uh, Nullianek that maybe we could sell in our store? I'm going to do like a use my wings like I'm feeling for pockets and be like, you know what? I don't think I picked anything up. Again, I'm talking about the group as a whole, not just you, Mr. Bird. Well, I'm just lying here on the floor because this stone is really starting to hurt my head more than anything. Oh, I'm, you, you look distressed. Do you have any drugs for me? Uh, no, I don't, I, I don't really have any drugs. Maybe bustle and pancake might be able to get you some crouchy. Whatever. I'll take whatever. As long as, because it's becoming unbearable and I don't know what it's happening. Well, uh, crouchy That's can be pretty addictive. Are you sure you w want that? And it's the it. only one I know about. I'll take it. Well, well I, I could work better. I could work better. But no, I didn't bring anything from the burning building for you to sell. Yeah, same with me. I uh, come downstairs with uh, me, step beside Drovo, and I say, we didn't bring anything except the truck. And, uh, and I think it's time to get some rest. And I, I need to talk to my brother. So... Okay. Can can we can we go to our bedrooms and have a rest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, and uh, and he says Bentley says yes, yes. Please, I you you look wounded. I think you should tend to that. Some more I than wanna, others. I want to go to Bentley and say here. I'll show you a trick about how to make um, the most delicious French dress ever. I know it's counterintuitive, but you need to add a lot of salt. And I want to use mage hand and just pour salt all over it. But then I'm going to use pressed digitation because I can change the flavor and make it taste like the most delicious um, French toast he's ever had. And be like, here, take a bite. See? Make a deception check. <laughs> 19. Okay. Uh, wow. <laughs> he doesn't have stand much of a chance there. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> actually pretty good. You can totally forget my plate of French toast, by the way. <laughs> he got a 16, but he didn't make it. Um, I'm, not, I'm not feeling it anymore. He says, you know, that seems bad. Isn't eating a whole bunch of salt is bad for you? Oh, but, it, you I'll, but I'll try it. But, but have a bite. Uh, he's a, he, he takes a bite. And says, wow, this is really good. <laughs> Do you guys want to have French toast again tomorrow? No, sure, but yeah. not with salt. First thing in the morning. <laughs> well, I, I was skeptical too, but it's really good. I'll pass then. Okay. All right. Well, uh, before you go to sleep, I have a couple of movies that we could pick from. Let's see. Okay. Oh, yeah. We have Patch Adams. And six days and seven nights. 
Oh God. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go to my bedroom with my brother okay. and I say, yeah, I'll pass. I'm okay. gonna watch movies with him all night. <laughs> okay. If we do it here in the living room and I can just lay here on the floor still, I'll listen. Uh, okay. <laughs> you seem like you need medical help, maybe more than drugs. No, 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 I'll, I'll be fine in the morning just like I, I just need to lie on on my back oh. just like try to breathe that was a lot of work that we just did mm. yeah. and if you if you concentrate on the um on the the hand it it can come off that would have been amazing information <laughs> oh and um and zoe uh you had discovered earlier and that the uh, the peanut butter jar full of dirt that's not dirt it's ashes oh okay ew yeah they're they're Whose ashes uh, they, they look like some kind of uh, remains they've got chunks of bone in them nifty just what i wanted on my christmas list <laughs> yeah <laughs> Okay, so um, at this point, everybody goes to sleep. Uh, you can take a long rest, and I'll do. I'll figure out the experience and stuff later. Awesome. Long rest. Here we go. Long rest. There we are. Yeah. Kind of okay. Over, we'll get a long rest. Cool. Right. There's a lot of stuff to unpack for next session. How do I? Steps. Where's long rest? It's uh, it's oh. uh, there's the On your short rest and sheet. long rest and campaign buttons there on on the top of your character sheet yeah. you have share short rest long rest and long rest you have to click it twice because it makes you confirm yeah yep cool. okie dokie you gonna make this guy the worst cook in the dominion <laughs> well we live here dude <laughs> <laughs> my character's from nolens we eat crawfish so that's saying something <laughs> Right. cockroaches at sea oh, man. My eyeballs, so I, I don't care that was a heck of a battle but we got my brother back and i'm happy yeah. so awesome guys thank you for doing this all right yeah this was fun yeah thank you it did not go like i expected at all that was that was awesome oh what did you expect to happen uh well i did think that you guys were probably gonna fight all those guys but i didn't expect the barn to burn down <laughs> I, I didn't expect Musette to have those awesome powers and just kill a bunch of enemies with like a yeah. single attack. That was she amazing. Can, she can fly too with that uh, liar. Yeah. Did you were you expecting that this might be off the record, but were you expecting to have Bentley be shot by my brother when we got back? Uh, okay. All right, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. There there's um there's reasons why it didn't happen, you know. Okay yeah cool all right so enjoy the rest of your saturday i will be sure to and i'll catch yeah. you guys on the flip side Bye -bye. yeah thanks for, thanks for coming. Go yeah i gotta go get a grand minion too oh yeah all Bye, right. thank you love y'all y'all later and thanks rob this was awesome yeah thank thanks you, rob. rob i like that i especially liked the fire that was cool and 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 brant that was great uh, you were really a big help uh, I'm starting to really enjoy your character. <laughs> I am just my favorite. <laughs> yeah, because when but most of us hey, we're not experienced D&D players, so sometimes when I feel like we're in kind of a jam and we don't know what to do, you kind of step in, which is great. Yeah, I'm, tr I'm trying to keep it moving and show that there's more options of doing stuff than just standing there and shooting it. Right. So... Well, and actually, what what Brent does is uh, is uh, those guys would would have totally overwhelmed you because there were so many of them. But because he he uh, he distracts them and he he totally messes up the action economy that would have been on their side. Yeah, he's our air support. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. they're all focused on other things, and so they're wasting their turns where they should be attacking you and throwing their weapons at him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know what to do. They're like. How what all I have is a sword and, and I've been ordered to get this bird. Well, they did slice a few feathers at some yeah. point. So anyway, yeah. all maybe right, guys, need bye -bye. to be upgraded and have guns next time. Yeah. Bye. Uh, no, no, that's okay. <laughs> all right. I'll see you guys later. Yeah. Bye.
Or I guess I'll see you in a minute. Yeah, right. Technical producer, Rob Danhauser. Score, Imagica, Cradle of Jersemet by Ben Warren. Character design, Asya Yordanova. And Bird Ninja Art. Additional illustration by Richard Kirk, used with permission. Additional music by Tabletop Audio. You can find the show notes for this episode and join the discussion over at www.clivebarkercast.com. We've got an archive of past episodes, news, features, and reviews, along with all the ways you can connect with us. You can subscribe on every other place you can find podcasts. Share your thoughts with us and share our podcast with your friends. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and news blog that's not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Thanks for listening.